Good everybody, welcome to the Cable 6 Game of the Week. Welcome to Gustafson Field in Goshen. I'm Ed Benjamin along with my broadcast partner for another season of high school football here on the Cable 6 Game of the Week. Today we have a good one, Menacing Valley and Goshen. These two teams used to be conference rivals, but not anymore. That's right, they were both in Division 2, Ed, and now they're in different classes, one in Class A, one in Class B. Menacing being in Class A right now, and they are 1-0 and in the division right now with Warwick 1-0, uh, and Port Jervis right behind them 1-0. and All three teams getting off to a good start. Walk Hill and Saugerties taking losses last week. Going over to Class B, Marlboro with a 1-0 lead, and Ronda out the, the Class B winner last year, also getting off to good starts. Goshen right there, New Paltz, Antiora, Ellenville, who may not have a team this year, are working on that right now, and Cornwall at the bottom of that list, but both teams in separate divisions, but it hasn't hurt the rivalry on the coaching side. Matt Pascarelli is the key player for Menacing Valley. He is the quarterback for the Warriors, and he has got a lot of responsibility. That's right. He's going to be calling a lot of audibles. Coach Bell has given him all the green light in terms of audibles this year. The first time he's done, the last time he's done that was with his son, Chris Bell, about six years ago. An outstanding reader of the defense. He makes him a very, very strong player offensively, especially in the passing game. Goshen's got to watch for him. It is not often that our key player is a wide receiver or defensive back, but that's what it is today for Goshen, Joe Papsidero. That's right. Papsidero, uh, the heart and soul of his team. Ed and Coach, Coach uh, Graham really likes his athletic ability and the way he can lead by example. This guy has got that standing ability in the defensive aspect, especially in the passing game, and that's what they have to work on today with him. That's what they're looking for. Non-league between Goshen and Menacing Valley. This is a pretty intense game, though. Back with our kickoff and starting lineups on kickoff right after this. I just can't believe some of the prices our competitors are making. Exactly. That's why we deliver prices every day. Fulton Price Busters. At Fulton, there's over 100 new cars and trucks available with financing as low as 2.9% or rebates up to $2,500. Look for additional savings on Fulton's No Dicker Sticker. And if you want a lower payment, call us. Your satisfaction is our bottom line. Fulton Chevrolet Cadillac Geo and Isuzu in Middletown. Awards Family Dealership. You know how cold winter can be. Our advice is head north to North Star Energy, your winter headquarters for energy savings. Pellet stoves, gas stoves, wood stoves, gas fireplaces, wood fireplaces, fireplace inserts. We have great service and a beautiful selection of stoves and fireplaces. So head north to North Star Energy, your winter headquarters for energy savings. North Star Energy, Route 211 East, Middletown. Women had had the vote for three years already, and alcohol was an illegal drug when High Weber opened Middletown's first work clothes store. We still have some old-fashioned habits. You don't need to carry a special card to enter our store or to get our best price. When you phone us, the first sound you hear is a human voice. And if you want it, you can get immediate help from salespeople who are courteous and knowledgeable about what they're selling. Is this any way to sell jeans, work clothes, and work boots? You bet it is. Roma, the name for quality in Italian food. Roma Pizza Restaurant uses only the finest ingredients and their own pizza dough fresh from their kitchen. To be sure that no matter which delicious Italian specialty you choose, you'll have a spectacular taste experience. Quality in Italian food. Roma Pizza Restaurant at the Wolf Hill Plaza, Route 211 Middletown, and the Shop Run. The Cable 6 Game of the Week is brought to you by Fulton, Chevrolet, Cadillac, Jew, and Isuzu, where you'll always get the guaranteed lowest price. And by Hudson Valley Awards in Goshen. Menacing Valley is 1-0. Goshen is 0-1 on our Cable 6 Game of the Week. As always, our sideline reporter is Alex Cabrero. Alex, what do you got for us? And before the game, you and Justin talked a little bit about the rivalry between Menacing Valley and Goshen. Although these two teams are no longer in the same division, don't tell that to either coach. Goshen's coach Graham is very happy to be playing Menacing Valley, and he kind of misses the rivalry. Last season was the first time in almost 50 years that, th that these two teams didn't play one another. Menacing Valley's coach Bell also misses the rivalry, but he thinks the game now means a little bit more to the coaches, and he believes that coach Graham planned a little bit extra for this game. We'll see what happens. Back up there to you. Thanks a lot, Alex. Officials for today's game, Eli Kazanovich is the referee, Frank Lutz the umpire. Linesman is Jody Corson, line judge Darren McCurry, and our timer is Chad Getz. We are ready to go. Goshen and Menacing Valley. Menacing Valley wi will receive Goshen winning the coin flip. They have deferred. Kicking off. 
for the Gladiator Gladiators is number 44, Andrew Rowe. Three players back from Minnesink to receive. Corey Lee, Ben Walsh, and Chris Graver. A short kick. Graver will let it bounce, taking it about the 19-yard line. And he is downed immediately by Joe Papsadaro. Let's take a look at the Minnesink Valley offense. They are led by the two-time, two-year starter, Matt Pascarelli. In the backfield, you have two players who made their varsity debuts last week. Corey Lee and Ben Walsh. Mike Cisha and Mike Graziano have some experience as well. Up front, we have a change. Chris DeMott in at center. He replaces Rob Wilcox, who has an injured back. The offensive line averaging about six foot two, 220 pounds, with three seniors and two juniors. Pascarelli brings them to the line. Twins left, no receiver right. Come on, Ryan. Come and the pitch Ryan. goes to Corey Lee. And Lee gets blocked and gets to the outside. Pickup of about four. We saw the Warrior offensive starting lineup. Let's get a scouting report from Bob Graham. All right, Minnesink offense is uh, multi-dimensional. They have a great quarterback, Passarelli. Started last year. He's got good feet. He throws the ball very well. They have two running backs that are, again, multi-dimensional kids, run and pass, tight end, returning starter for the third year, big kid. So, uh, you know, I, I think they're going to be uh, running pass and run at us, so we have to be ready for both. Second and five for the Warriors. Up the middle, that's Graver, and he is met and dropped right at the 25-yard line. Starting lineup for the Gladiators <laughs> from Goshen. They run a 4-4. We'll switch up into a 5-2. Their defensive line averages six foot, 203 pounds, with three seniors and a junior. One returning starter in Ryan Rich. Four linebackers. Experienced, Andrew Shack and Voss. Voss playing last year, Andrew Rowe and Mike Smith. Smith also returning starter. And in the backfield, secondary, Brawley, a sophomore up from JV just a week ago. Third down and five now for the Warriors. Pascarelli to pass. Looking over the middle for Graziano, and it's tipped away by Pat Sodaro. Incomplete, and Minnesink will have to punt. Let's get a scouting report on the Goshen defense from John Bell. Defensively, I was kind of surprised. We haven't seen Goshen in a couple of years, and uh, they did a lot of switching between the 4-4 and the 5. And uh, I think they did a lot of it uh, situationally against Port Jervis. You know, they wanted to be in the 4 when they were going to expect pass and the 5 against the run, and that's going to cause us a problem because we're used to just running against one solid defense, and we're worried very much about the changing fronts in our offensive line. Jesse Mann back to punt for the Warriors, standing on his 10-yard line. Papsadero and Frank Nuara back to receive for the Gladiators. Good punt taken by Papsadero at the 40. Slips a tackle into Warrior territory. Turns the corner and he's finally dragged down at the 33 yard line. A 27 yard punt return for Joe Papsadero. Let's take a look now at the Goshen offense. Pat English is their quarterback. He is a junior who made his varsity debut a week ago. He was sacked five times by Port Jervis and unfortunately could get not could not get them into the end zone. Get the starting lineup after this play. First and ten inside the 25 inside the 35 yard line. Hand off right up the middle. Andrzejewski picks up big yardage about eight. Now let's look at that starting lineup. Andrew Shack is the fullback. We'll also see a lot of Jolt Voss. Andrew Rowe is your halfback. Nuara, Papsadero, and Mike Smith. Papsadero and Smith, both returning starters. Up front, they average 5'11", 212. Ryan Rich is a two-way starter. There are three seniors and two juniors to this starting front line for the Gladiators. Second and two. This time it's Rowe. Rowe picks up the first down to the 23-yard line. For a scouting report on the Goshen offense, let's hear from John Bell. They're running a pro. Uh, they're running a pro in the slot, and uh, a lot of the eye, and using their big backs, they have three pretty good-sized backs with some good speed. Uh, their quarterback is uh, very good at the option, uh, so we're very concerned about their power in their option game. 
I formation now for the Gladiators. That's Tor Lindlin split wide to the right. Papsidero, uh, excuse me, English going to throw left, and it's complete to Papsidero inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. Here's the Menacing Valley defense. They run a 4-4 as well. They average 6'3.5", 229. Graziano is a returning starter. Jacob Wright starts both offensively and defensively. They have one senior and three juniors. The four linebackers, Chris DeMott, or excuse me, Mike Gurdnier in for Mike Catula, who has a bad ankle. Kazingo is a returning starter. And in the secondary, it's Zubikowski, Ray, and Cher. Second and five. Up the middle, Andrushak. Pulling blockers with him to the 15, or inside the 15, close to the first down. First scouting report on the Menacing Valley defense, here's Bob Graham. Defensively, Menacing plays a 4-4 stack, and they really jam up the middle. They're very tough on uh, inside runs. Uh, and they play three deep zone. They're, they're basic offensively and defense. They don't do a lot of fancy things, but what they do, they do good. They don't make turnovers, and uh, they play tight football games. It is first down at the 12-yard line for the Gladiators. Lindland wide to the left, Papsadero to the right. I formation. Andrew Shack hit and dropped immediately by John Fazingo. Well, one thing that we talked about with Coach Graham before this game was that they're going to have a lot of difficulty running the football against Minnesink. They like to put as many as eight guys on the line right up front. They like to take away the run. Minnesink this year has good athletes on the defensive quarterback positions also to help out with the pass, but Goshen thought that they would be more successful a little bit to the outside, and with the passing game, you saw a short pass to Papsadero. That was a very positive thing for them, but they're having success running the ball right now, Ed. Second and nine, in motion goes Rowe. Papsadero and Nuara to the right, and it's in and out of the hands of Rowe will be third down. English just threw the ball just a little bit too soon. Andrew Rowe turned around to receive. Not quite in time, but we'll talk about Pat English a lot this game. He's probably one of the, has more potential than any other quarterback that they've seen here at Goshen, and sometimes you can see the pass just thrown a little off the mark. And that's and saying Rowe. something, Justin, about English, because Joe Stepp led the Gladiators to back-to-back -back section titles. We'll get into him a little bit later. Option, Rowe, lots of room in front. He's hit and dropped at about the seven yard line, which is about five yards short of a first down. It'll be fourth down. Question now, do they go for the field goal or attempt to go for it on fourth down? Looks like they're gonna try a field goal. Good work right here by Goshen. Good job at the line. Watch them seal off the right side. Quick pass, a little draw action there, and around comes Rowe. But here's the block by Papsidero. You see that just to the left of your screen. A nice job getting him a couple extra yards. Finally brought down by safety, Mark Ray. Fourth down, they bring in Scott Worsdale, big number 74. He's their kicker. Scott Worsdale is 210 pounds. He plays line, but he is their kicker. And it is blocked. And it's taken by Rowe at about the six-yard line, and that's where Menacing Valley will take over first and 10. Not sure who blocked it. Maybe we'll get a replay to see who was able to get the big hand in and block that field goal attempt. It looked like Worsdale got the top half of the football when he kicked it, kind of like on a line drive. Didn't get much under it. So we'll get a look at it here. Check the right of your screen, see what we got. Yeah, it looked like a low play, but oh, nice job. I, if I'm right, I think that's number 19. That's a menacing James player that snuck in there and got a hand Perkinham on the ball. Maybe, James Perkinham. Nice job splitting the, the lineman there. Either hit off his hand or off the back of one of the linemen. Not sure. Anyway, it's first and 10 for Minnesink at about the seven yard line. Goshen likes to see them pin deep. Pascarelli, open is Herkenham. Wide open. To the 40. James Herkenham finally taken down by Ryan Niger, number 30, but not before a big gain up to the 42 yard line. That's about a 36 yard pickup for the Warriors. Big, big mistake there by Anthony Brawley and Mike Smith, the rookie getting burned here. Double coverage, they both laid off of him. Herkenham just takes off downfield. Right on the mark is the pass from Pascarelli, and off he goes. Anthony Brawley coming in right here, trying to make the tackle, initiates the stop, but getting underneath is Herkenham, underneath the defense, making a nice gain. Minnesink out of the cellar. First and 10 at the 42. 
This is Graver on a misdirection, breaks a tackle. Tough running from Chris Graver to the 48. Alex, what do you have for us? Okay, and on that blocked field goal before by Goshen, Coach Graham ripped into his quarterback, Pat English, who was also the holder on that. He told English next time to set up seven yards behind the line. He think, he feels that this time English set up a little bit too close, therefore it was blocked. Back to you. I think, he, I think he's right. I think he was a little bit close. It did look that Perkenham didn't have that much room if it was him that blocked that pass to get to the line. It wasn't that much space between the ball and the lineman. Second and six now for the Warriors at the 48 as they look to get inside Goshen territory. Lee, and he is dragged down from behind by number 32, Steve Andrushak. No blockers out in front for Corey Lee, but there were three Goshen Gladiators. And Corey Lee, a player that the Minnesota coaching staff is very pleased with so far this year, very quick. They're surprised with his ability to run inside. As you saw him cut in right there, but Goshen read the play very well. Two players in on that. Steven Andrushak is um, a linebacker that they really rely heavily on in the run, as well as Zolt Voss, those two middle linebackers there. Big for Goshen in the running game. You'll see their numbers called a lot today as they are back in the position. Third and three as Lee picked up one yard. Pascarelli to pass he's over the in. middle, looking for Graziano, and he's got him. Down to the 25-yard line before pa Joe Papsadaro able to take Mike Graziano down. Just a simple slant play. Minnesota knows that Goshen's going to put some blitzes on. They change defenses constantly, and coaching staff read it right. Not sure if it was an audible by, by Pascarelli, but right here he drops back. Look at the time he has. Plenty of time. Makes an accurate pass right into the hands. Nice grab right there by Graziano, bringing him down. The two men we expect to see in the defensive backfield, Frank Nuara and Joe Papsadero, Nuara getting burned on that one. That was a pickup of 28 yards. First down and 10 at the 25. Pascarelli to pass again. Over the middle, over the head of number 80, Mike Cisha, and Pascarelli hit as he let go of the ball by Ryan Rich. Intended for Cisha and James Herkenham, who was coming around. He's a deep man on that play. But good pressure by Goshen. You can see Pascarelli did not set his feet. He kind of threw it as he was fading back. Not a good decision. He's lucky that didn't end up in an interception. 4.23 left in this first quarter. No score. Minnesink at the 25 yard line. Second down and 10 for the Warriors. Shisa winds up, lines up wide to the right in the slot is Herkenham. Graver and Lee in the background in the back field. Graver hit about three times before taken down behind the line. Number 72, Rob Eustis making the tackle. Scott Warsdale getting in there, making the initial contact, slowing him down, allowing Eustis to make the final tackle. You can see good penetration here by Goshen. No fooling around in this play. Nice job, just couldn't get all his hands on him right there, but down he goes. It was Greg, Greg Nowicki, Nowicki, number 72. Greg Take Nowicki, not not Bob Eustis on, in on the tackle. Third and 13 now. Goshen doing a nice job reading it. The Minnesota Valley offensive line got, has to make the adjustments. Goshen continues to change it. Here comes the blitz. Pascarelli out of the pocket, throws, and it is complete. Short of the first down to the 20 yard line. Shisa making the reception. Fourth and five at the 20. Wow, you just saw an outstanding piece of athletic ability. Matt Pascarelli, you saw another wrinkle in his game that he has and it's just the outstanding ability to move out of the pocket and roll i think that was a rollout anyway he was forced out of it by scott warsdale and zold Voss. Voss coming in on the blitz you can see it here Voss right there at number 44 also andrew rowe coming in looking to make some tackle there and pascarelli with a nice accurate pass on the run minnesink is going to go for it fourth and five pascarelli to pass looking right and it is blocked and intercepted by Scott Warsdale, and he is taken down at the 21-yard line. They had a man open. Mike C should just cut inside. They were looking for just a, a little pass underneath the defense, which was dropping back. Pascarelli saw him wide open. Warsdale stepped up, got his hand up, and ball comes right to him. So 2.51 to go. Huge turnover. Minnesink was really moving well in the offense. Big turnover for Goshen. And we still have no score. First and 10 at the 21 for Goshen. 
something you have to remember about this Goshen team. They did get beat badly by Port Jervis last week, but it was a three-point game up until about two minutes left in the first half, and we have a flag on the play. Anthony Brawley got to the corner, picked up maybe five, six yards. There is a flag, however. Looks like that will be coming back. Is referee Eli Kazanovich talking it over with Mike Gerdner, captain, one of the captains of the Warriors. That penalty will be on the Gladiators, so let's move them back. It's a call to clip. So that'll move Goshen all the way back to the 14-yard line. Ooh. Painful penalty. Things you don't want if you're an inexperienced football team, especially on offense. Goshen has to dig their way out of this one. So it's still going to be first down, but now it's first and about 17, 18. Make it 18. For the Gladiators. She's, uh, excuse me, Nuara wide to the right. Papsidera wide to the left. Brawley and Voss in the backfield. That is in and out of the hands of Frank Nuara. Went off his shoulder pads, will be second down. Jeff Bukowski making the initial hit, stepping up. Hitting Nuara just as he was about, the ball just got there. It was a good timing play right here. Just a quick drop back, quick throw. They got some room to run here if Nuara can hold on to it, but I think it was deflected at the line of scrimmage by maybe it was Jacob Wright. I'm not sure. I think it's the defensive tackle inside there. Bukowski making a nice job ensuring that Nuara would not receive that football. Third down, excuse me, second down now for the Gladiators. Linlin and Papsidera now wide to the right. Voss and Brawley in the backfield. And Brawley up the middle. Breaks one tackle, but can't break a second, third, and fourth. Only a pickup of maybe, maybe two yards, probably one. Ryan Niger leading a host of Warriors in on the tackle as we approach two minutes to go in this first quarter. No score on our Cable 6 Game of the Week, live from Goshen. Some good defensive plays being made here. Not great execution on offense. A couple turnovers. have A turnover has made it... Uh, Easier for Goshen to hang in there. Minnesota was doing very, very well, but so far, pretty good defensive football game we're seeing here. Goshen looking to get themselves a first down. Have a long way to go. English to pass. Beautiful pass. Pass arrow complete. First down and more to the 47-yard line. Quick slant to pass arrow. Able to hold on and pick up big yardage. Oh, he just threw a rope, a line drive right in there. Perfect timing. It gives you an idea of the kind of good things that the Goshen coaches are thinking about this guy. Look at it, just a line drive right into the hands. Perfectly executed pass. Nice pattern run by Papsidero. Again, a big reason why he's our key player of this game. They're going to look to him defensively and offensively, make big plays, and it gets Goshen a first down and great field position. 27-yard pickup, first and 10 at the 46. That's Andrew Shack, and he is hit immediately by Chris Mott, number 78. And number 88, Jesse Mann, excuse me, 89, Graziano. Loss of one on the play. Not getting a lot of push from the Goshen line that time. But Minnesota is really tough on the run. They stack up a lot of players up there with that 4-4. Under 50 seconds left in this first quarter. We have no score. Double tight end, Papsadero wide to the left. And English to pass. Looking for the tight end, Mike Smith, in and out of his hands. Just out of his reach, will be third down and 11. Tough to ask a quarterback to run and throw at the same time. You could see the athletic ability of English being able to do that, although he just led his receiver just a little bit too far. Mike Smith will get another look at it as English drops back. He gets a good, good time. He's got two players bearing down on behind him, one right in front of him. Had maybe he had to release it a little early because of it, but. Smith unable off his hands. Got to make a catch like that one. It's in your hands. It's important. Lindman to the left. Pops it arrow to the right. Third down and 11. Draw play and it goes nowhere. Jacob Wright stops Anthony Brawley at the 40. Loss of five will be fourth and 16. You call it, Ed. It is a draw play, but... Someone missed the block right there. Actually, a couple players missed the block. Jacob Wright coming right in, unfooled and untouched. 
Actually, loss of six back to the 39-yard line. So as the first quarter winds down, three seconds left. I don't know if Goshen's going to get this snap away. They do. Comes down, bounces away, and Great Corey Lee is now going to fall on it at the 16-yard line. So it ends up being a 46-yard punt for Goshen. That's the end of the first quarter. No score. Goshen and Menacing Valley on our game of the week. You know, I used to think just because a bank was a great big bank, well, it was a better bank. But know what? I found a bank that changed my mind. Now I've got a bank that knows me by name. I have a friendlier bank. A bank that gives me the personal care of my big out-of-town bank. I've gotten two big dollars. But best of all, I've got it right here at home. Orange County Trust Company. Worthy of trust since 1892. I just can't believe some of the prices our competitors are making. Exactly. That's why we deliver prices every day. Fulton Price Busters. At Fulton, there's over 100 new cars and trucks available with financing as low as 2.9% or rebates up to $2,500. Look for additional savings on Fulton's No Dicker Sticker. And if you want a lower payment, call us. Your satisfaction is our bottom line. Fulton Chevrolet Cadillac Geo and Isuzu in Middletown. A Wirtz family dealership. Character, leadership, heart, spirit, and courage. Those five traits can best describe this year, Goshen's Joe Papsadero, who was awarded, of all things, a bowling pin. This bowling pin has been a part of the Goshen bench for the past six seasons, and each year it's handed down to a junior by a senior who the senior feels is most deserving of it. As I said, this year it's Goshen's Joe Papsadero. Before each game, the Goshen players touch this pin, hoping to, get, hoping to bring them good luck for the upcoming game. Well, will it work? We'll find out. Back up there to you, Ed. Thank you very much, Alex. So we are set to begin second, second quarter play between Goshen and Menacing Valley. I'll take a look at the first quarter statistics, and it's going to be a lot of passing yards for both teams. 73 for Menacing Valley, 32 for Goshen, 85 yards for Menacing. The one turnover, a big turnover, is, however, 52 total yards for Goshen. We have no score. First and 10 for the, glad for the Warriors. Pascarelli to pass. Over the middle, complete. To Mike Sisa, up to the 35-yard line. Pickup of 18. We do have a flag on the play, however. Sisha not happy. Let's see. Maybe he knows why that flag is still on the ground. Pascarelli dropped back. Sisha releases. A lot of time he has and almost blocked again inside. But you can see the reception there. Anthony Brawley unable to step in front of the play. Menacing going right at the sophomore just up from the JV. The safety in the middle there. Not sure what the call is. Ed couldn't see it off the replay. That flag was on the Warriors. Illegal procedure of some kind. So negate the reception. Ball will be placed back at the 11-yard line. Loss of five. And it will be first down and 15 for the Warriors. Turnovers and penalties killing both teams. Both the teams offensively. Some good defense being played. But the penalties have killed the offenses on both sides of the ball. Scott Warsdale almost making the block on that reception that was called back. First and 15, handoff Lee. Lee is taken down after a short pickup, maybe three yards, maybe only a yard. Seems like teams uh, offensively have a lot more room to pass the football today. A lot of holes, a lot of openings, both quarterbacks with good arms. Expect to see a lot of that from both teams today as we have already. The running game just not getting it done for Minnesink at this point. And Coach John Bell hustles out onto the field. Believe we have an injury. Not sure who the injured Not a party now. is. That pickup was nothing, no gain. So second down and 15 now for the Warriors. There we have That's Bell DeMott. leading the play, one of the players off. That is Chris DeMott, who is really the second, the backup center. He was in for Rob Wilcox. So we'll see who comes to the line now to snap it for Minnesink, and it is Wilcox who is back in the game now, the starting center normally, who was out of the starting lineup because of the injured back, but he's back in now. Pascarelli to pass, he's over the man. middle. Graziano again, knocked away by Pacinero. Nice job, Joey, baby. What 
an excellent play. Good read, Papsidero saw it coming all the way. Graziano had the good, good room to make that catch, jumped up in the air, the pass was thrown in a good place for him to receive it. You see he comes down, he cuts right over the middle. Well thrown pass, up in the hands of Papsidero. What a great job, and a good job by the cameraman to get that shot. That was an excellent play. Good timing, jumping up, making that, as we mentioned before, the heart and soul of this team, Papsidero. Getting it done on the defense. Will rarely leave the field. Plays both sides of the ball. Played safety last week. They feel he's more valuable at cornerback this week. Third and 15. Pascarelli looking left for Herkenham. Overthrown. We'll bring up fourth down. Menacing will punt. Well, we talked about a lot of passing room out there downfield, but so far Goshen has been able to put a little pressure on Pascarelli, not giving him as much comfort in the pocket to throw the football, not giving him as much time as evidenced by that overthrow right there. Pascarelli had a great game last week against Saugerties, 10 of 16, 168 yards and a touchdown. He also ran for a score, and that was only in three quarters because he was taken out in the fourth quarter because they were really dominating the Sawyers at that point, winning 33-6. In his end, own end zone is Jesse Mann to punt. Noara and Papsidero back to receive. It comes to Noara at the 44. Has room inside the 30 and taken out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Jacob White on the tackle. Excuse me, the 22 yard line. So a return of 20. It was a not, not a bad punt by man, but up comes. That's, that's Nuara. Nuara right there, he gets tackled very well. Nice job, he got some good blocking upfield, but he had a lot of room to run. It was a high kick, it wasn't a bad one. But he had a lot of time, he got good blocking from the uh, front man up front on the special teams. Nuara, nice run, good position for Goshen. See if they can convert. It was a return of 25, not 20. Complete, Mike Smith has three or four yards of running room and he's down to the 10 yard line. First down for the Gladiators. That was all set up by some nifty, nifty handling of the ball by Pat English. It was a, it was a play action. Right inside, you see a little, little fake handoff here, fake handoff here, drawing the defense. He's got one man, good blocking out to the side by Anthony Monica, who pulled. Right there with the reception is Mike Smith, the big tight end. He had some room, he cut to the inside. He thought the defender was outside, but he actually was inside. He may have gotten a couple extra yards. Had Papsidero there blocking for him. Pick up a 13, it's first down. Rowe on the option. Rowe gets to the corner, Rowe scores. And that's the first point of the season for Goshen. Very nicely done, all set up by some excellent blocking on the offensive line. William Green, Anthony Monaco, Jason Jackler sealing off the left side. Good pitch, look at the draw. Three defenders out of position because of the good draw there by Pat English getting the ball out to Rowe on a perfect pitch. Rowe has nothing but green in front of him. Scott Worsdell in to attempt the extra point. This time they are seven yards back. And this time he gets it up and through and with 9.55 left, Goshen strikes first at seven nothing. How will Howell help you? Give them a call. A.C. Howell Propane Service, serving the industry and the community for over 60 years. A.C. Howell, 386-1900. Let's take a look at that scoring touchdown seven, one more time. Seven nothing Goshen. And you gotta give a lot of credit to the offensive line of the Gladiators, doing a great job in stopping Menacing Valley from really putting the uh, wall up in front of their goal line there, but
Goshen did a great job in sealing off the left side of the line. As you can see, look at the three defenders. One, two, three white jerseys right there. Now it's just a game of catch me if you can for Andrew Rowe. Good speed, touchdown, scoring drive. Two plays because of a great reception on the punt. 22 yards and 32 seconds. Goshen gets their first score of the year real quick and at a good time. Rowe to kick off and it comes to Graver at the 18 and he is pulled down at the 30 yard line. Kickoff return of 12 yards. Minnesink goes on offense with 9.49 left in this first half. He ran into the back of Joe Laguerre who actually made the biggest hit on him there to take him down. Things not going well for the Warriors right now. They have their own men tackling their own players. Well, they really, I think, have to get something established with the run. The air game is there. They're having difficulty keeping the pressure off of them from the Goshen defense. We get a look at Coach Bob Graham. A little bit happier now that he's playing with a lead. Minnesota go really, I think, has to get the running game going. I think they're going to do it now at a close set offense. First and 10 at the 30. Lee took a sort of a little pitch there. I think that was a miscommunication right there. I think Pascarelli expected Lee to be right there for the handoff, and Lee expected a pitch. Loss of five. Well, he did get the pitch regardless, but they like to run off tackle to Minisink. They have a little bit more speed than they have in years past. Here's the pitch. That's right. He looked like he's going to give a handoff. Good, again, good anticipation by Greg Nowicki on the defensive line of Goshen doing a great job in getting in there and disrupting any chance for Lee to get any kind of room upfield to run. It's actually second and 14 now. That was a loss of four. No wide receivers now, three tight ends for Minnesink. Lee looks to get to the corner and he's ridden out of bounds after a pickup of three to the 30, 29 yard line. Well, we said they had to get the running game going, and by gosh, they're trying awful hard. Left side, outside, right side, outside, trying to go up the middle, off tackle a little bit. Nothing's working. Goshen is reading the plays very well, very well prepared this week for this Minnesota offense. And something that we haven't seen much of is audibles from Matt Pascarelli. Something you'd expect to see a little bit more from him, but he hasn't shown us that yet. Third and 12 now. Chiso wide to the left, Kirkenham to the right. Pascarelli to pass over the middle, and it is complete. Pachisa, oh. who just took it right away from Frank Nuara. Two number 80s going up for it. And the offensive player, Chisa, takes it away from Nuara. Nuara read the play very well. So did Anthony Broly, the safety again. They're both in on the play. Pascarelli finally gets a little bit of time. Throws a wobbly pass, but right there you could see, that's right, that was Nuara in there on the play, but it was taken right away by Cisha. Good hands on the play, tough, tough catch. Gives Minnesink out of the end zone. And it's a first down at the 41-yard line. Herkenham in motion, up the middle. That's Ben Walsh. Short gain, pushed back by Andrew Rowe, number 44. Rowe's having a big game so far. That's right, he's in on seemingly every single play, reading it very, very well. Andrew Rowe, linebacker, 6'0", 185, he's a junior. Hasn't had much in the way of uh, experience, as has little of this Goshen team. He had a very good game last week. He was in every play against Port Jervis. He really loves to hit, though, as you can see. He's getting some, getting some chance to do that today. Second down and six now for the Warriors. Shisa to the left. Pascarelli to pass. And it is intercepted, Mike Smith. Corey Lee drags Smith down at the 34-yard line. That's the second time, Justin, that Pascarelli has had an interception by a lineman. Well, I think Goshen has made a very good adjustment in terms of setting themselves up. They know Minnesink is going to try and go for the short passes to get the short yardage game. James Herkerham releases from the from the line. He was down. He was a down lineman on the play. Pascarelli looks right at him. Does not see Smitty, who's in the middle there, standing right in between him. Mike Smith read the play perfectly, just standing there, reading the quarterback. Picks off the pass, gets a couple yards. Another big turnover for the Goshen defense. Boy, they are stepping up today. 
First and 10 at the 29, English to pass, and it is taken down by Papsadero at the 20-yard line. Go Papsadero, showing sure hands, grabbing that ball as he fell to the turf. Papsadero looking like an All-American today on both sides of the ball. This was a great pass right here, but Jason Schur had his hands on the football. The quarterback, number eight, was right there, but Papsadero was able to catch the ball because he had the right position, stepped in front. Cher allowed him to get in front of him there. He was cutting in on the play. Good defensive pressure there, but just outstanding ability. Pops Adair really showing his medal on offense now. 14-yard pickup to the 20-yard line, first and 10. Rowe up the middle, hard running from Andrew Rowe inside the 15. Let's go down to Alex now. Alex, who do you have with you? Okay, thank you very much, Ed. It's Parents' Day here at Goshen, and with me now are the quarterback's parents of, of the Goshen, Joe English, Kerry, and his wife, Wendy. Kerry, it's first points that Goshen scored this year. What is it like knowing that that's your son, the quarterback, who helped that out? It's really big. Uh, he's a first year starting. He's a, he's a junior. He lives and breathes for this game, and, you know, he's been a quarterback since he was 10 years old, and he just loves football and everything about it and the camaraderie with his team. What is it like as you're his father there seeing that happen? What do you feel? Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm winner's his number. I'm ready to go. Yeah, move over here now to Mom Wendy. Uh, I hear your voice the loudest in there. Your voice is dead. What is it about Goshen football that you're so loud about? I am just the biggest fan of my sons. Uh, the enthusiasm. Goshen is a together team, and we're all familiar with each other. We're all friends. Um, it's just, uh, just enthusiasm. I love it. I okay, love it. take care of that voice there. Thank you very much. Hey, Justin, back upstairs to you. Uh, we have a flag on the play. Thanks a lot, Alex. Uh, a clipping call against Goshen as they're trying to run to the near side here, off to the left. It looked as if, I can't tell exactly. We have to take a look at the replay, see if we can catch that clip. Handoff is given. Brawley right here to Brawley, that's right. Brawley takes it on a quick pitch here, but ah, that might have been right there at the top of your screen. Couldn't catch the number, but he saw the flag being thrown. gets dropped. You see the flag being thrown, and Goshen will be pushed back. Ball placed down at the 23-yard line, so they only lost. They it was a 10-yard penalty, so it's now second down and 12 instead of second down and two. And another loss on the Minnesink defense. I believe that's Mike Guardanier. I'm not sure, number 64. Graziano pulls English down for a big loss back at the 32. 10 yard loss, make it a nine yard loss to the 31. So it's gonna be third and about 30. Nope, third and 20, excuse me. See English dropping back, good pressure right there by Graziano coming around, the 6'3", 200-pound senior defensive end, breaking through the offensive line and making the big tackle. Number 31, Dave Zubikowski on the sidelines now, went down with that injury. Third and 20. English, the pitch to Brawley, has some room. Good speed, cuts Breaks it in. one tackle, he's hit and dropped. I believe he's gonna be short of the first down. Big hit by number 30, Ryan Niger. He picked up maybe 15 yards. See where they mark it. They mark it at the 17-yard line, so it's a pickup of 13. Well, it helps that they play the same offense on the JV level as well. Nice pitch again. Three players drawn for the menacing defense, and look at Brawley go. Good speed, playing safety, both sides of the ball, getting a couple calls here. On the first tackle, Ryan Niger finishing him off. Joe Liguero for Minnesink. Positive yardage, get back with that penalty loss. Actually a pickup of 14 to the 17 yard line, fourth and seven, and Goshen is going to attempt a field goal. English sets up at the 24 yard line. It's gonna be a 34 yarder, and it's gonna be off to the right and short for Scott Wurzdale. So with 428, it is still seven nothing. Back with more on the Kibble Six, game of the week.
bring your summer to a fabulous close with an action-packed football Saturday at West Point. On September 6, Army football celebrates Group Day by offering $14 tickets and a photo opportunity with the Commander in Chief's trophy for groups of 25 or more. Mikey Stadium summer finale is September 13th featuring Army football youth day and kids carnival. Tickets for use have been reduced to just $14. Come spend a day with a black, gold, and gray. Order Army football tickets today. Dial 446-4996. Group Day September 6, Youth Day September 13th. Remember to watch the Cable 6 Nightly Report five times a night, five times a week. Join Tracy, Nicole, and myself as we bring you the very best in local news and sports. And Minnesin goes back on offense, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. What were you guys so happy about on that picture? Eh? <laughs> You're told to smile, you <laughs> smile. <laughs> Just happy to be here. She's we got a, a good one here. We do have a good one. Up the middle, it's Lee, taken down by Andrashak. Short gain. Second down. Minnesink again trying to get that running game going. They're struggling a lot here. Goshen doing a great job and reading the offensive sets of Minnesink. Really, there's not much in the way of, uh, of surprises with this Minnesink offense other than the fact that Pascarelli can really run the passing game well with his audibles. It makes it a little bit different for a wrinkle, but the offensive line last week missed about two or three of his audible plays. Maybe he's shying away from that a little this week. Quick handoff. Graver, and once again, Andrushak in on the stop. Bring up third and four. Following the game, Justin and I will pick the Cable 6 player of the game with plaque provided by Hudson Valley Awards in Goshen. Third and three now. That pickup was four yards to the 27 yard line. 320 and counting left in this second quarter. It's a seven nothing score as the clouds begin to roll in. It's gotten a little bit darker here, but it's a beautiful day for football here in Goshen. Absolutely. Herkenham to the right, Shisha, Shisha to the left, pass over the middle, overthrown, looking for Ben Walsh. Out of the backfield, will bring up fourth down. Out of the backfield, a long way as we take a look at some of the clouds, getting a little bit darker here in Goshen at Gustafson Field. But uh, good pass over the middle, just a little bit too much on it. Again, Pascarelli being rushed as he tries to hit Ben Walsh coming out of the backfield, had a long way to run, but he split the middle. And he had some room, had he been able to catch that, connect the pass, it might have been seven points. Make that six for the Warriors. Now back to punt will be Jesse Mann. Mann is third punt of the day. And Nuara and Papsadero back to receive for Goshen. They've had good returns both nice the punt. first two times. Papsadero takes it at the 36. And he is taken down at the 47 yard line. Pickup of 11, return of 11, where Goshen will go on offense. Alex, what do you have for us? Okay, thanks. At a few plays ago, you saw Dave Zubikowski, excuse me, Dave Zubikowski taken off the field by Minnesota Valley coach Bell and Robbins. He just suffered a slight concussion. He says he's okay. A little bit of a headache, was cracked back, but he'll be fine. He'll be back into the game. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Alex. Minnesink being hurt by injuries so far today. We saw Chris DeMott go out as well. He was replaced by Wilcox. Also losing Mike Odinsky out with a knee injury. He's uh, number 73. He will dress today, but probably won't play much. Fade pattern for Papsadero, and it is oh! Oh, just out of his hands. First guy to touch it was actually number eight, Jason Scher, but Papsadero almost able to make the catch. Jason Scher, had he not gotten a hand on it defensively, Papsadero would have been making an outstanding reception, maybe would have gone in for the touchdown. Good throw. You see the arm strength again from English. That's pretty impressive how he can get rid of that ball downfield on, and on target as well. Fade patterns are so tough to throw because you kind of have to throw it to a spot where you think the receiver will be, not where he is at the moment. And English has not played, played a lot with these players, especially Papsadero. You kind of have to know the speed of the person you're throwing to as well if you're going to cut it loose. Second down, English. Swing pass to Rowe and Nice open field tackle by number 31, Dave Zubikowski, who's back in the game. Goes trying a little screen pass. Not much blocking down on the near side where the pass was thrown. It looked as if uh, English was going to go to the fade again. Go deep once again, but just a short 
Fake handoff to the middle and out to the side it goes. Here's Rowe, had a nice run earlier for a touchdown, but no sale this time as he's brought down by Dave Zubikowski back in the game. Only a one yard pickup, third and nine now for Goshen. Rowe goes in motion. Dangerous, they keep going to the air here. And that throw is behind Papsadero, incomplete. We'll bring up fourth down. 152 to go, you got a seven point lead. You don't want to give Minnesink uh, an interception, maybe a chance to run it back of uh, interesting calls they're making here, trying to throw the football. You figured they'd just run it and knock some time off the clock. Now with the inter incomplete passes, it gives Minnesink a little extra time and they're gonna receive right now as Rowe steps back to punt. Three man back for Minnesink, Lee Walsh, and number 24, John Fazingo. Nice punt. Walsh takes it, breaks one tackle, but is dropped immediately at the 27 yard line. 142 to go in this second quarter. And it's 7 0 Goshen. Well, coming up at halftime, Justin and I will talk about this first half. I also have a special interview. But we'll have stats and highlights from this first half. A very interesting first half. Not a lot of scoring, only one score so far, but some good football play between Minnesink and Goshen on our first Cable 6 game of the week for 1997. Ball placed at the 27 yard line, so Minnesink will have a minute and 42 seconds to go 73 yards. And there's one man in the backfield. That is Corey Lee. It'll look for him to do a little bit of blocking right there. Gets a nice one. Pascarelli stepping up. Pascarelli rolls and throws complete to Shisa. Minnesink had trips left that time and able to make the completion. Shisha could not get out of bounds. It's a critical play there as timeout is called by the Warriors. As you said, Ed trips left. See Pascarelli step back. It'll look at him now. See, see, uh, you see Corey Lee stepping up, making a nice block, giving Pascarelli a little bit more time. On the run, chasing him down is Rich Ryan, or Ryan Rich make that. Zisha with a nice grab, plenty of time. Had a couple receivers right there. The pickup was 13, and Minnesink calls timeout with 1.31 to go. Ball marked at the 40-yard line. Still a lot of time for Minnesink at least to get on the board in a kicking sense, but the way they're throwing, that they have a chance to even get a score. We're going to take a break right here, be back with the last minute and a half after this message. Cap Production, we help your business communicate more effectively. We do this by combining extensive communications and business experience with the impact of video technology. We're Cap Productions, and if you're advertising on cable, you need to call us. Cap Productions, you'll know which ones are our commercials. For free video demo and brochure, call Cap Productions at 692-VIDEO. Video. Goshen Gladiator cheerleaders trying to get the fans going here. A minute and 31 left. Minnesink first down at the 40-yard line. Trying to get the fans going, but they don't need to do much for the defense. Goshen doing a great job shutting out the Warriors thus far. Trips right this time. Chisa Graver and Herkenham. Pascarelli over the middle for Herkenham. Complete. Inside the 40 to the 39-yard line for the Warriors. Pickup of 21. Stepping in right behind him, Andrew Rowe on the defense. Frank Nuara and Joe Papsadero just back on defense, couldn't get it done. Back stepping is Pascarelli, has time. A little wobbly, but gets the throw there. Receiving at number 19, James Herkenham, the 185 pound senior, gives them great position. 110 to go, Minnesink on the move. Trips again. Look Pascarelli, flag on the play, it's gonna be against the Warriors. Complete to Walsh, he's taken out of bounds at the 30, but we're gonna have a clip on Minnesink. So move the Warriors back. 
clear play, trying to protect their quarterback. Pascarelli had Walsh underneath, right there about 10 or 15 yards downfield. You could see it here, okay, to block, that's Lee trying to hold up at a push from behind. That's gonna be on number 74, Jacob Wright is gonna be called for the clip right there. Dangerous play, they get called for the flag, pushing him back. And this is gonna be a big, big penalty because you move it 10 yards from where, or 15 yards from the penalty itself. So move it all the way back to the Minnesink 35 yard line. It's gonna be first down and 35 yards. That's huge. I mean, they had a chance to get into scoring range to kick a field goal. Just a mental error right there because Pascarelli has good foot movement and he also had some receivers downfield. Got to give your quarterback a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt of there. Now they just have no, no choice but to throw deep. Pascarelli in the shotgun from the 35. The snap goes over his head. So Pascarelli is taken down and dropped inside the 20. And now Goshen might think to call timeout. Maybe they want to stop the clock. And, and they do. And they do call timeout with 43 seconds left. Timeout Goshen is the call. Get a look at the replay. Just simply a bad snap. Way over the top of that. No chance for Pascarelli to get it. I think he made the right decision though, Ed, and running back to get it and not trying to run out of bounds or anything like that because you want to let time go off the clock. He says you may have thought of the throwing it, but just hold on to the football. Do not fumble it. You're deep in your own end. Not an easy position to be when you got five blue shirts bearing down on you right there. Gosha takes the time out. They're talking it over. Going to see what they can do here. It is second down and very, very long. That was a loss of 18. So they're back at the 17-yard line now. It's about fi think 42 of this. yards it is to go <laughs> for the first down. Exactly. It is now second down and 42 yard, 43 yards Excuse me, for the first down. That is unbelievable. <laughs> My only question about that whole play, Justin, is after the ball went over Pascarelli's head and he picked the ball up, if he threw the ball incomplete, it would have been an incomplete pass, move the ball back to the 35 yard line. And he looked like he had a little bit of time where he could have done that. A little bit of time, but it's also dangerous when you have players coming at you. On a play like that, I mean, it, the best you can do is not fumble it, I guess. But uh, you have a point there, right? You get rid of the football, throw an incomplete pass, but then you risk the chance of it being intercepted and then you have no one back but yourself to make the stop. So, menacing now, it's gonna run out the clock. Pitch to Lee. Lee points out a blocker, that's Pasadero. Lee oh. turns the corner and he's dragged down at the 42 yard line. Big pickup for Corey Lee. Of about 25 yards maybe to the 41, call it a 24 yard pickup to the 41. And on plays like this, you can see why the medicine coaching staff is so high on Lee. Just a quick run out to the left side. You can see the speed that he has allows him to turn the corner. He's pointing out a block. Give me some help up there, guys. That's Ben Walsh giving him a little bit more room and a very impressive piece of running. Gets Minnesink out of serious danger. Now 34 seconds left. They have a little bit more room to maneuver. Maybe try a passing play here. Still third and 30. They'll try the right side this time. Walsh blocking again, gives him some room, but just not enough. Goshen great on the pursuit right there. Pickup of eight yards, so it's gonna be fourth and about 21 with 23 seconds left. A timeout is called by Goshen. So we'll take a break. 23 seconds left in this first half. Back with more right after this. Dan Tyler got help from Aussie patients who got help from Johnson's Toyota. Oh, hi. We're at the certified used car center here at Johnson's Toyota. Whether it's watching Little League Baseball, or Junior Hockey, or a BOCES competition, our commitment to others is part of our working philosophy here at Johnson's Toyota. The people at Johnson's Toyota have won their second consecutive Toyota President's Award for making customer satisfaction and community service their highest priority. The new Johnson's Toyota, like the new Dan Tyler, and the new Camry are better than ever. Royal Pools and Spas, family owned and operated since 1959. At Royal Pools and Spas, our commitment is keeping you, our customers, satisfied for the life of your pool or spa. Come visit our showroom to see the Doughboy Above Ground Pool, featuring a 25mm expandable liner, which enables us to give you a deep end in this above ground pool. 
Everything Royal Pools and Spas sells, they also service with confidence and reliability. Royal Pools and Spas, Route 32, New Windsor, Route 17M, New Hampton. Fourth and 21 yards now for the Warriors. So Jesse Mann will be back to punt. Nuara and Tapsadero to receive. Mann back at his 35 yard line. 23 seconds to go. And don't know what that was. The ball fell and hit the turf. So Minnesota or Goshen will take over where it dropped oh at my. the 35 yard line. 21 seconds. No punt at all for Minnesota Valley. It has gone from bad to worse. So Goshen takes over at the menacing 35. Before, Unbelievable. Before the punt, before the punt was made, you can see the snap right here. Hits the ground. And they're gonna call it down right there. Down, I guess, where it hit the turf. So English now to pass. Get nice the block. block. Now he's got some room to run. Looking for the sideline. Taken Can't down get there. at the 28-yard line. They call timeout with nine seconds left. Anthony Monaco pulled and just leveled a Minnesota defender coming up to make the tackle. I believe it was Mike Graziano, big player. Graziano got about 25 pounds on uh, Anthony Monaco, but he comes up and just drops him right where he stands. Goshen gets a timeout again. Nine seconds to go. Nine seconds, they're at the 27. That would be a 44 yard field goal attempt, which is, I believe, out of Scott Wurzdale's range. Well, so they probably have, if they want to go into the end zone, that'll probably be it. If they want to go maybe one short pass and out, they can maybe do that, pick up 10, 15 yards, and then call a quick timeout. It would be a bomb. I don't know if you can do that on this level, Ed, with nine seconds to go. Too many things can go wrong, and neither team has been able to get out of the playing field has been able to get out of bounds on either uh, series, Minnesink or Goshen series. I don't think this is, uh, well they're gonna go for, get some yardage here, but I don't think this is too far out of Warsdale's range. Uh, as evidenced by a couple of balls he's kicked, but Minnesink has been able to get a hand on the football two out of the three times. Goshen has tried to put it through the uprights. Here we I go. I formation. I formation and twins right, Nora and Papsadero. English, Not a man. fade. And it's intercepted. That ball was tipped at the line and intercepted by Minnesota Valley with three seconds left. That was Scott Wurzdale, excuse me, Mike Gurdnier. Getting my 64s confused here. Mike Gurdnier with the interception at the 19 yard line. I believe big 6'5", Brad Kowalik, the 240 pound junior, just a beast in there on the offensive line. The big guy getting hand on the football as, he was, as it came out of English's hand. It's funny, Ed, because it didn't roll. It, ju it just kind of sat there like a knuckleball, landing right in Gordonier's hands. Minnesink so with three seconds. Not a whole lot they can do at this point. Three seconds left. I believe Minnesink will down it and just take the halftime score of 7 nothing Goshen. Lots of early offense and late defense in this game, Justin. We saw Minnesink drive, but then there they were on it, or excuse me, Goshen drive. Unable to capitalize the, the block field goal. We saw menacing drive. They've had a couple of turnovers. But yeah, exactly, Ed. You talk about turnovers and penalties. Both teams are also playing a little bit sloppy in terms of the flags and in terms of the turnovers. Menacing much more so than Goshen. Goshen's defense, though, right now is the MVP of this game. They have really gotten it done in terms of stopping this very potent menacing offense. Three seconds left. Pat Storelli in the shotgun formation, so they obviously will not just sit on the ball with three seconds left. And he is run out of the pocket, and he's gonna take off. He's got some room in front. He's got a long way to go, however. And he's taken down at the 41-yard line, so that's a pickup of 22 yards, but that's gonna do it for the half. Seven nothing is our score. Let's go to Alex and Bob Graham. Okay, thank you very much, Ed. I'm here with Coach Graham. Coach, 7 nothing. your intensity level for this game is definitely up. Yeah, we're playing very well. Should be more than 7 to nothing. Okay, talk about your defense a little bit. 24 tackles now, two interceptions. Uh, they're the MVP so far. Uh, what did you say now? I didn't hear it. 24 Tw tackles? 24 tackles, your stats guy told me, and two interceptions. Your defense is really oh, sticking it. They're playing great. There's no question. They got a shutout. We're doing fine. But our offense moving the ball. We're making mistakes we should have 
another touchdown on the board. Okay, coach, thank right. you very much for your thank time. You. Ed, Justin, back up there to you. Seven nothing is our score at halftime. Goshen with a lead. We'll be back with halftime right after this. Dan Tyler got help from Aussie patients who got help from Johnson's Toyota. Oh, hi. We're at the certified used car center here at Johnson's Toyota. Whether sponsoring Little League Baseball, or Junior Hockey, or a BOSU's competition, our commitment to others is part John Bell. Okay, thanks a lot, Ed. Coach, you're down by a touchdown. The turnovers are what's hurting you. Oh, yeah. We're, we're just not executing. Uh, obviously, that's our problem. Our offensive line seems very confused. We knew that was going to happen at times. And we just can't, we can't turn the ball over. And we've given up some big penalties that have just killed us, you know. And we've just got to play more under control and more disciplined football. Right, you told me before the game, you're missing a couple players, though. That might change that a little bit. Yeah, but that shouldn't have an effect on the guys are in the game, know what they have to do. And we're just making some fundamental mistakes. And I have, my job is to get them back on track and see, make them sure that they know what they're doing and do it with confidence. You say that's your job. What are you going to do to pump well, them back up here? Well, our, you know, right now, what we're talking about now is just getting back to basics, things they feel comfortable doing. We try to do some complicated things, and we got a little confused and blew some assignments. And we're going back to basics, and uh, that's what I have to do. I got a little carried away on defense with some of the stunts we wanted to do, and we got made it too complicated for the kids, and they had to think too much. Now we're going to take away the thinking part and just play football. Back to basics. Towards the end of the first half there, you were moving the ball a little bit, some bright spots you can look forward to yeah. in the second half. We, we can move the ball. It's just that we can't have the turnovers or make the big penalty or the big mis mistake on, on offense, either in the line or whatever. I mean, we give up a 28-yard pe uh, penalty after we get a 15-yard pass. You know, we got first down on their 30 with a minute and 40 going half we're in great shape to get tied up and we give up 28 yard penalty can't do things like that and win games okay coach bell thank you thank you very much for your time ed coach says he's going back to the basics we'll see if it works back up there to you thanks a lot alex as we get ready to start this second half justin let's talk about some of the individual statistics we saw the team statistics during our halftime report matt pascarelli six of ten passing for 119 yards corey lee he had 121 yards rushing a week ago. He's got 39 yards in this first half. Perkenham with two receptions for 57 yards, and Shisa three receptions for 35 yards for Minnesing Valley. Well, as evidenced by the amount of yardage they racked up, especially in the passing game, again, we mentioned they have a lot of weapons offensively. And uh, we'll take a look at James Perkenham right there for the Warriors. Uh, he will fill in at quarterback if Pascarelli does get injured. But... He uh, is a very, very big, important part of the offense for Minnesink Valley. And look to them to go to him a little bit more because of his experience and his sure-handedness in the uh, passing game. For Goshen, Joe English, or Pat English, excuse me, making only his second varsity start, 6 of 11 for 70 yards. He's shown he's pretty calm back there in the, in the pocket for Goshen. Joe Papsadero having a great game, three receptions for 46 yards. He's also made some great defensive plays. The yeah, English hasn't made the kind of mistakes that you would expect from an inexperienced quarterback thus far in this game as we get a look at him right there. A uh, young player, but as they said, he's probably one of the best players Go. since since Mike Hunter that, that they think uh, will be one of the best quarterbacks that ever played team. here at Goshen. I haven't seen much of his running ability yet, but they say he's outstanding. Went to quarterback camp over the summer, improved. He's also uh, plays two other teams. Varsity baseball player as a sophomore, he started. And he also started on the JV Hoops team as a point guard last year. But um, sacked five times last week against Port Jervis. Uh, obviously, from the look at this game, they made some adjustments on that offensive line. Goshen will receive to begin this third quarter. Matt Pascarelli will kick off. No, excuse me, Jesse Mann will kick off for the Warriors. The kick comes down at the... 25 yard line or 20 yard line it's Andrew Rowe Rowe up to the 40 before he's taken down that's where the Gladiators will go on offense just see the nice job by Rowe he didn't really turn on the Jets he just kind of skipped his way up to the 35 yard line the letting his lineman in front of him doing the blocking he gave him a nice little wedge he could just trot right through the lane right up the middle first and 10 at the 40 yard line just over the 40 yard line for the Gladiators. The way this game is going, I think Goshen really would like to see some points put up on the board here. Any kind, three or six or seven. They'd like to see some points. Rowe, hit and drop. Jacob Wright, big number 74, 6'4", 270 pounder. Makes the stop, two yard pickup, second down. 
Goshen going to the running game right off the bat. They're going to probably look to do that, take some time off the clock as well. But using Rowe has uh, been pretty solid for them so far this game. And if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. Second down and eight now for the Gladiators. Nora to the left, Katsudero to the right, I formation. English to pass and he's hit and dropped as a fumble on the field and Minnesing Valley recovers. John Fazinga with the slap of the ball, creating the penalty or the fumble and Mike Graziano with the recovery. It was either Graziano knocking the ball out or Fazingo. We'll get it. We'll get another look at it, Ed, because uh, well, we don't have that replay. But it was. It might have been Fazingo, as you said, coming up real quick for the linebacker position. A little blitz play. I formation. There looked like they were going to roll out, maybe pitch, as English was looking for the linebacker Katula to come up and make a hit. But before he could even get rid of the ball, sneaking up behind him was Fazingo knocking it away. Minisink has a chance now to get right back in it. Up the middle, Ben Walsh. Hard running inside the 30, close to the 25. Ball was marked at the 37, so that's a first down for the Warriors. Hey, if you're saying, boy, this guy's awful small to be going up the middle, you're right. He's small, has great hands, but he's very quick, and they really like the way he can run inside. Walsh, watch him. He's small, but he eludes tackles very well, as you can see. Goshen defense having trouble bringing him down. He's had a very successful time. Andrew Rowe finally bringing him down. Walsh had 61 yards rushing on seven carries a week ago. First and 10 at the 27. Lee breaks a tackle and is inside the 15 yard line. Corey Lee to the 13. Corey Lee absolutely keeping those feet moving, making a move quick and he's allowed to get away. Zolt Voss right there on the tackle. He gets away from him. Scott Warsdale inside right there he makes uh, Ryan Rich miss. And you can see there he goes away. Number 78, Bob Eustace also right there. Cannot bring him down. Quickness by Lee. Here come the Warriors. Ball marked just inside the 14. It's a 13-yard pickup. This is Walsh. Inside the 10, close to the 5-yard line. Pickup of 9. He's right on the 5 right now. Make and it, yeah, excuse me, 9 yards. Minnesink right now running off tackle. Jacob Wright and right guard Peter Morgano open up big holes for both Lee. See Coach Bell giving him Ben Walsh a little bit of congratulations there. Nice job. Walsh doing a nice thing. He's a small guy, but he likes to get in there and lead block a lot. He's seen that a couple times this game. Ben Walsh, 5'5", 145 pounds, but he plays a lot bigger than his numbers indicate. Second and maybe a yard and a half. Lee. Lee just inside the five will be close to the first down marker. Goshen defense trying now to put up that brick wall. Minnesink knocking right on the door on their way in. As again, they're going to stick with Lee as they just roll off to the right. Hand it to Lee, direct handoff. Good blocking there. Look at that work by the Minnesink offensive line. Good push there. Greg Nowicki in there. Scott Warsdale also helping out on the tackle in that play. Third and a yard. Giso wide to the left. And it's a keeper by Pascarelli and he scores. Oh, maybe not. No indication yet, they got a spot it. Maybe, nope, he has not scored. They're gonna mark it at the one, but it is a first down and goal. Pick up of four for Pascarelli. Maybe a little premature on the caller, Ed, but it looked to <laughs> us like it was in. It was awful close, and they spot it right there. Pascarelli just takes off. Good quickness, good push from his nose, from his center. Rob Wilcox actually make that Chris D'Amato's in there now for Wilcox. Wilcox is back in after they're switching back got hurt. Forth. Per play, that's right. Wilcox is in. Pascarelli now. Morgano as well. First and goal inside the one. Audible. Pascarelli, keeper, doesn't get anywhere. Nose guard Ryan Rich with a brick wall, second down. He calls the audible, you can see him trying to direct plays just before the snap and the offensive line apparently not ready for it. He saw something in the defense that he thought he could exploit with a little push up the middle. Maybe change the play around, but Goshen right there ready for it. 
He might have lost a half yard as well, so call it second and one and a half. Second and goal from the one and a half. Shisa again, wide to the left. Herkenham just off the tight end. Big play here for Goshen. Walsh touchdown. No doubt about that one. Ben Walsh just firing right up the middle. Quick handoff, good blocking by Carl Rumsey, Mike Gordon here. In on, barely touched is Ben Walsh. So it is seven six now, Gladi Gladiators on top. Minnesink will look to tie it up with the extra point. And Matt Pascarelli will attempt the point after. The holder is number 11, Jeff Kutowski. Snap is high, placement is down, the kick is good, and with 7.51 left in this third quarter, we are tied up at seven. All right, let's get it back, guys. I'm taking tractors and trade on trucks. My storage lots are jammed fence to fence with brand new Chevys, Olds, and Geos, and I'll disc it. Get able to get in, just a quick play to Good hustle by Walsh, he had a lot of room to run. I'll tell you why, Carl Rumsey and Mike Gordon here, left guard, left tackle, doing a great job, the scoring drive. Very impressive, seven plays, 36 yards, only 322 clicks off the clock. Minnesota making the adjustments. Ben Walsh, the junior, getting into the end zone for the first score for the Warriors today. That's his second touchdown run of the season. He had one last week against Saugerties. That touchdown set up by the fumble recovery. He's got room. Papsadero on the kickoff return, and he's over the 20 to the 20, over the 30 to the 35 yard line. Goshen will go on offense there. Ryan Nigler with the closed line, slowing Papsadero down. Otherwise, he had a nice lane to run in. Got there just a little late. Ball marked just over the 35 yard line. Goshen will go back on offense. Their last offensive possession. Papsadero walking gingerly a little bit there. He got shook up on the play a little bit, but he goes wide to the right. That's what happens when you play every down. You might be hurt, but you stay in the ball game. Pitch to Brawley. Brawley with blockers out in front. Brawley close to the first down marker. Tell you what, not only do they have blockers though, it takes a good, a good player to read that, and he read his blockers very well, making a couple nice cuts left and right. Got very positive yardage, good sign for Goshen here. Quick pitch back. Zolt Voss out on the play, looking to make some blocks here. He sits right behind number 62, Ryan Rich, as he runs himself inside, finally taken down by offense. number 31, Dave Zubikowski, the cornerback. They are measuring it, and it is a first down, 10-yard pickup to the 45 for Anthony Brawley. Anthony Brawley may find himself on the varsity for a Good part of the rest of this year if he continues to show the offensive promise, making a couple of nice defensive plays as well. Come up from the JV. Coach Graham put an arm over him and said, after practice the JV, hey son, come on with us. You're gonna finish up with us for the rest of the day. And here he is on the varsity making a very nice impact as a sophomore. Hand off up the middle. That's Andrew Shack. No, excuse me, Zolt Voss. And he picks up 10 yards and he's close to the first down marker. Zolt Voss, the big rumble up the middle. The big Offensive and defensive player for Goshen. Got a lot of time last year. Comes from a very, very strong football family. He's got knowledge and he's also got some skills. Look at him up the middle. Good blocking. Great job by Jack Rich and Monaco again, giving Voss a lot of room to run right up the middle. Right Actually Keep lost control of the ball but fell on it. Pickup of nine, second and about a foot for the Gladiators. The pitch to Brawley. That doesn't go anywhere. First hit by Jesse Mann and Mike Graziano takes him down. Play broken up by Jesse Mann who came inside. Calls a little disruption in the backfield. Looked like the little option there, but I don't think they're trying to have English run too much, but I think they're just trying to have him draw the defense while he kicks it out. But Minutesink again, read the play very, very well. English getting a nice pitch off to Brawley. I had nowhere to go on it. That was a loss of four, so call it third and four, maybe four and a half, because they were only about a foot short of the first down. On second down, it is third down. English, his first keeper of the day. First and down. he picks up the first down to the 43. Make it the 42. 
Goshen offensive line starting to make a statement now as they did late in the first quarter with that touchdown. Here it is right here, nice seal off job. Right, Good little block, now, just offense. slowed down. Brawley slowed down the defender coming in, the linebacker, but as you can see, English pushing forward. Good speed, finds the hole, gets some positive yards and a first down for Gladiators. Now they're starting to move the ball and they're very, very happy, I'm sure, that they're moving it on the ground rather than in the air. First and 10 at the menacing 42 yard line for Goshen. English to pass out of the pocket. Looking deep got for Papsadero. He's got him. Touchdown, Goshen. And two yards to Joe Papsadero. A beautiful pass by the young quarterback, Pat English. Nicely, nicely done. Papsadero coming up lame in the first series. Looks like he's feeling a little bit better now. He gets great position behind the defense. As you can see, Papsadero right on the inside position on the flanker, takes off. Plenty of time for English to throw. Doesn't even step into it, just throws the arm, and look at the touch right there. Papsadero gets behind Mark Ray and Jeff Potofsky, and the extra point is good. 14 to seven, Goshen after giving up a turnover. Menacing scores, they come right back. Good score. We'll be back with more right after this. Join the pageantry, patriotism, tradition, and excitement of a football Saturday at West Point. See why Mikey Stadium is rated as the number one place for college football. All right, after menacing scores to open up the half, Goshen comes right back. Look at the time the English has. Well set up play. Papsadero, Big Joe, comes right down the far side. Makes a perfect catch, nice touch. Had to turn around for it a little bit, but Papsadero, one of the best athletes ever to come through Goshen. Reminds Coach Graham of Joe Stepp, another great player. He makes the touchdown, giving Goshen a seven point lead. Five plays, 65 yards, mostly done on the ground. Time, 2.20 in the drive. And Joe Papsadero, again, the leader has done it offensively today and defensively today. Little feather in his cap with the touchdown run. Justin, you were saying that he looked a little winded, a little groggy after that kickoff return. Not groggy there on that 42 yard touchdown reception. Snaps right back and here's Rowe with the kickoff. It comes to Graver at the 20, fumbles it. And now Graver looks to get upfield. Takes a hit and drop at the 27 yard line. 5.15 to go in this third quarter. It's a 14-7 Goshen lead. Mental errors, I think Coach Bell would agree. A play like that could have gotten you another five or six yards upfield, maybe more, but Graver just took his eyes off the football for a split second, hits the ground, and that cost him. As we get a look at Chris Graver, 165-pound junior out of Minnesink Valley. Graver with 21 yards rushing last week against Saugerties. He's only got six yards rushing on four carries here today. Number has not been called quite as much as Corey Lee or Ben Walsh, who I'm sure Minnesink will go to right off the bat, right away, see if that off tackle play works. Now they go to the air. Pascarelli out of the hand, or out of the reach of James Herkenham, looking over his outside shoulder. Herkenham stays on the turf, may have knocked his wind, the wind out of yeah, him. Yeah, he landed flat on the turf, just a poorly thrown pass by Pascarelli. Had Herkenham wide open, didn't set his feet quite right, but just threw it way, way out of the reach of Herkenham. Watch him land right on his chest, boom, right on the sternum. And you can see the look on his face right there, but I think he did have the wind knocked out of him, didn't look like anything serious. He's, he said, he's yeah, conscious. My, <laughs> my lungs went whoosh, that's what he said. <laughs> He got a little smile on his face. Just wait till the air gets back into your lungs there, kiddo. Yeah, that is one of the more painful things to happen because you don't feel like you can take a breath. It's scary, yeah. You just don't feel like you can breathe. But if you've had it happen to you a couple times, and as a football player, it happens a lot. Let's take a look at the dive again. Lands right on his stomach and sternum, as you mentioned, Justin. <laughs> First thing to hit. It would have been a good swan dive in the pool. <laughs> it forces the... <laughs> That might have made quite a good splash right there, but also checking out his knee. He may have hyperextended it when he landed because he did land kind of extended on the play. Maybe uh, it looks like maybe he just got hit. a cramp because they're checking out the, his calf. His calf, yeah, that as well. 
So basically, while you're on the turf, you might as well check out everything. Yeah. Basically, we're what you're here by the Minnesota <laughs> coaching staff. Coach Simmons there. 509 left. There's Herkenham. They Let moved him to flanker this year. Uh, like his, they like his size on the team. They give the offense an extra blocker as well as an offensive option. We'll take a quick break. 509 left. Goshen with a seven point lead. Current standings after week one in class double A. Pinebush with a big win over Middletown last week. Minor Woodbury and Kingston all 1 0 and 1 0 in class play. Newburgh with an out of conference win as well. Minnesink or Middletown, Valley Central, and Washingtonville all 0 and 1. As James Herkenham is now being helped off. Ob actually, obviously, the injury is more extensive than we first thought. His knee is in a little bit of pain, but he's walking off on his own power. Class A, as we mentioned at the beginning of this game, Warwick, Minnesink, and Port Jervis all 1-0. Warwick and Minnesink with league wins. Wallkill and Sargates 0-1. And, and as Herkenham makes his way off the field, we'll get the rest of these uh, standings in. Class B, Marlboro and Rondau Valley both 1-0 and 1-0 in conference. Goshen, New Paltz, and Antiora both all 0-1. They haven't played a league game yet with Ellenville and Cornwall 0-1. Ellenville will play this week after having to forfeit their first game of the season because they didn't have enough players on varsity, but they did get some new players this week and are playing. Class C, only four teams. No league game so far, but Red Hook and Highland both winning. Liberty and O'Neill both losing. And after this play, we will get... The Class D standings, first, second down and 10 for the Warriors. Pascarelli to pass, out of the pocket, and he is hit and dropped. He tried to pump fake, and no one was open, and the pocket collapsed. Well, I was watching downfield, <clears throat> and there were people open, like Cisha, wide open, just looking at him, holding his hands out, waiting for the pass to come to him, but it never came. Here are the standings in Class D after week one. Livingston Manor with one win and a league win over Eldred. Tri-Valley has not played a game yet. They were supposed to play Tri Jefferson Youngsville, but Jefferson Youngsville then combined with Roscoe, so they don't have a team, so Tri-Valley had a bye. They will begin their season this weekend, so the combined Roscoe-JY team is 1-0. and oh. Those are the current standings after week one in Section 9 football. Third and 11 now for the Warriors. Loss of one on that pass, and it is incomplete. Flag on the play. Could be pass interference on Nuara. Have to see what the call is. Looked like it was a little bit of contact before, and I believe that's Cisha clapping his hands right there. Yes, it is. He thinks that the play is going to go in favor of Minisink. One of the first penalties against Goshen, and it will be pass interference. And we'll get another look at it here. As you can see, Nuara, I think, got to the body just before the ball did. We look at the pass, and there's there's contact right there, and he was just there before, before the ball reached. So Nuara just didn't time it quite right. Ball was still in the air, interception possibility there. But automatic first down for the Warriors, and they're on the move. At the 46-yard line. Alex, what do you have? Okay, yeah, the injury to James Herkenham looks serious at first, but it's not as bad as it actually is. He said he dove for the ball, and when he hit the ground, both of his legs cramped up. They're a little tight now. The trainer's working on it, but he's expected back in the game at any moment. Back up there to you. That's okay, Alex, so that's... The that, Warriors, Ed, that's huge. Yes, it is. That was Ben Walsh with a short pickup, maybe two yards. Ryan Rich on the stop for Goshen. Second down, and... Let's call it a one-yard pickup, so second down and nine at the 47 for Minnesink. 350 and counting left in this third quarter. Goshen with a seven-point lead. Minnesink looking for that combination that got them the seven points early on this first quarter. 340 remaining in the second in the second half opener, third quarter. Zubikowski went in motion. The pitch is to Lee. Lee breaks a couple tackles, oh. picks up a first down into Goshen territory at the 47-yard line. I don't know how much of it is bad tackling by Goshen or Lee just doing a great job keeping his legs pumping and getting away. Could be a combination of both. Lee likes to go off tackle, especially to the near side, to the right. Gets a nice lead block again. Look at Ben coming out there, making a nice play. Ben Walsh looking for a tackle, but he cuts in ahead of him. And Rowe, 44, unable to make the first stop. Steven Andershack finally bringing him down. 
pick up a 13. First down and 10, it's Lee again, looking to get to the corner, and it doesn't happen this time. Who is it? Is that man, Joe Papsadero, stringing him out and making the tackle for a loss of one. Papsadero, the senior with the experience, reads the play very well. Can see Lee coming up, and he just steps up and makes the hit, stretches it out, knows exactly what he's going to do. As you can see, Corey Lee now goes off to the side, a little bit of... Yeah, he was uh, steps. He was slow getting up, so the officials called an official time out. And then as soon as they do that, Lee must leave the game for one play. Even though he then jumped up and got wanted to go back in, they made, said, no, uh son, you got to go back out. So it's second down and 11 now. Pass to to pass. Got Cisha right here. Graziano out of his hands. Again, Graziano with his hands up in the air, well, no flag thrown, he got some contact, defender hanging on him as he was reaching for the football, but again, Mike Cicia for the third time in this series, Ed, wide open on the side closest to us, he's just wide open, and Pascarelli just, just doesn't see him, he's got his eyes set on one play, sees Graziano as he throws over there, and unable to connect in and out of the hands, as we get a look at Coach Bob Graham, Trying to get his defense back into sync here. Pas Slow down the Warriors. Pascarelli a little cold in this third quarter. Their first drive was set up all by ru the run. Having a little trouble with the pass. Out of the pocket now, third and 11. Now he passes and it's way short. Actually, that was a good play because Papadero was stepping in front of Zubikowski and it would have been intercepted. Fourth down now for the Warriors. Pascarelli relies on his arm a lot, as you can see him running. Zubikowski hitting his head, just couldn't get open, couldn't get it there. He's been in on a couple plays now for the Warriors in this sequence. Not a starter, but Pascarelli running the offense. Doesn't like to step and throw it, doesn't see it. He likes to kind of move a little bit and use his arm a lot on passes. Has a good touch. But that time, I guess he just decided to cut his losses and throw it into the ground, see what they can do with the punting game here. Pin Goshen very, very deep. Jesse Mann back at his own 36-yard line. Nuara and Papsadero back for Goshen, standing at their 10. This punt will be taken. No, it'll be let bounce. Papsadero takes it on his nine. Gets about one tackler, spins, and is dropped right at the 20. So an 11-yard punt return for Joe Papsadero. As the sun comes out here, just to sink here. You can see Papsadero as he decided he was going to grab the football was rolling pretty deep might as well grab it and see what you can get upfield turned up to the middle which is where his blockers were first down at the 20 yard line for goshen as we come up on two minutes and 20 actually exactly two minutes and 22 seconds left in the third quarter goshen with a seven point lead Let's see what Goshen's going to do here. Most likely they'll run deep in their own end and they'll pitch. Brawley is taken down from behind by number 64, Mike Gurdnier. Loss of five to the 15. Gurdnier all over it. No fool in him on this one. He just steps right up. Zubikowski right there you see, but Gurdnier coming right up to the side. Comes right out from behind as a matter of fact. Gets a little help there from Chris DeMott. The two of them coming on a blitz. Stuffs the play. Deep in the Goshen end. Second down and 15 now as English giving the play to the Gladiators. 145 and counting left in this third quarter. Noara ride to the left. Papsadero to the right. Split backs. Hand off. Andrushak up the middle. Still going. Right, good blocking, good blocking, Over the 25 to the 26. Taken down by number 31, Dave Zubikowski. Heck of a run by Andershack. Again, one of the things Coach told us today, is, uh, yesterday told me, he spoke to me on the phone, he said, you know, this kid has got an outstanding ability to keep moving. He's a big player, plays a little defense as well, but look at him come in, hold on to the football there. Minnesink players trying to strip. Tackle is finally made by Zubikowski. But uh, Andershack showing some, some promise going up the middle there, getting some help from his offensive line. It's a 12-yard pickup. Now third and four. Andrew Shack again 
And he's taken down short of the first down marker at the 29. Fourth down for the Gladiators. You will see Andrew Shack as you see him right there. He'll go on and off with Zolt Voss, who's now stepping in as Goshen looks to change, looks to punt. But Andrew Shack will team up with Voss maybe a little bit later this year, going for a little power game. Two of them, 190 pounds, and Zolt Voss upwards of 220. A couple big players. Tell you, Goshen is set in the backfield for this year and next. English, Andrew Shack, Voss, and Andrew Rowe, all juniors. So they will be very experienced in the backfield next year. Nice punt. Rose punt taken at the 43-yard 40, line by Fazingo, and he slips and falls down. No gain. Seven seconds left in this third quarter. It's 14-7 Goshen. We will probably have one play before the end of this third quarter. Coach Graham has to be happy with where he's sitting right now. Last week, at this time, he was just blown out of the water by Fort Jervis, their defense just stuffing Goshen, giving them nothing, and their offense just rolling right over the Goshen defense, even though they had a pretty good first half. But uh, at this point last week, they were nowhere near in the position they are now. Have to be happy at this point, especially with the way the defense is handling Minnesota's potent offensive attack. Fort Jervis, the big blue. Fort Jervis looks to be the class of Class A. They beat Goshen pretty easily. As you get a look at Joe Voss making his way off. They beat Goshen pretty easily in a non-league game last week, and then last night, they just whipped up on Warwick. Saw a coach from Warwick earlier on. They're scouting this scouting game for this the Goshen, game, the Spirit Trophy He just game. looked at me and said, the game got away from us. Port Jervis really put, put a hurt on him. So Port looks to be the class of the field in Class A. Up the middle, that was... And, uh, excuse me, Ben Walsh. ben Walsh. That's the end of the third quarter as he picks up two yards. 14-7, Goshen at the end of three. Fourth quarter action coming out next on the Game of the Week. I'm taking tractors in trade on trucks. My storage lots are jammed fence to fence with brand new Chevys, Olds, and Geos, and I'll discount like crazy or take anything of value in trade for one of these. I'll take coins, stamps, antiques, furs, jewelry, wall land, or real estate. Even a tractor. Need a car, truck? Call me in Warwick, New York at Country Chevy Olds Geo and tell me what you've got to trade. My answer will be yes. Women had had the vote for three years already, and alcohol was an illegal drug when High Weber opened Middletown's first work clothes store. We still have some old-fashioned habits, you don't need to carry a special card to enter our store or to get our best price. When you phone us, the first sound you hear is a human voice. And if you want it, you can get immediate help from salespeople who are courteous and knowledgeable about what they're selling. Is this any way to sell jeans, work clothes, and work boots? You bet it is. Get a look at some of the Goshen players. 14-7 is our score as we are set to begin the fourth quarter. But before that, let's go to Alex and Frank Carroza. Okay, thank you very much, Ed. I'm here with Minnesink Valley Athletic Director Frank Carosa. Now, last week, Minnesink Valley stuck it to Sorgati, scores 33-6, made Minnesink look really good. Um, in your years here, how's Minnesink looking? Compare them to teams of the past. Well, uh, I think a difference for us this year is that we have more numbers out, and so therefore, we don't have players that are going both ways. Mm -hmm. And when you start playing those double-A schools and the A schools, Looking. That's a big factor because they wear you down and by the by the time you're in the fourth quarter your kids are so tired But this year we have kids that we, and then we have a lot of kids out for football this year 150 kids out for the program So, uh, you know, that's a big factor. I think in the game here. It's 14-7 uh, now You know coach Bell better than anybody you've been here 25 years. He's been here 12 years What do you think coach should do to try to pull men think ahead? Well, I think you see you saw him just at the half and we scored the first time he was just trying to figure out uh, coach Graham's 4-4 we started running up the middle Bobby Graham closed that down. I think he's going to try and go to the flats with Walsh and try and free him on the outside. It seems the pass defense might be the thing, you know, that they're a little lacking on. Okay, we'll see if you know Minnesink football. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Right. Ed, back up there to you. Okay, Alex, and we have a fumble. Dustin? Big play here. Corey Lee getting the fall. He just doesn't get the handoff. You can see he bobbles it right there, reaching out to make a tackle. Scott Warsdale, the big hit from number 34, Zolt Voss, loses the football, but who steals it? Score, Who is that guy? Number 32, Steven Andershack comes up with the football, just robs 
Lee of it, Nikoshin's on the move. Brawley goes nowhere, maybe a loss of one on that swing pass. What a huge play for Goshen, big turnover midfield, they got great field position, they got control of the football, and they have a seven point lead. Let's take a look at the stats. After three quarters, 111 yards rushing for Minnesink. You look at the statistics and you would think Goshen is losing and Minnesink is winning. That is not what the score says. 14-7 Goshen, 230 yards total offense for the Warriors. Goshen's not doing too poorly at 190. Two turnovers for each, and now Minnesink with their third early in this fourth quarter. So Goshen has the ball, second down and 11. Brawley goes in motion. English to pass out of the pocket. And he runs out of time and he's taken down, but he does get back to the line of scrimmage. Smart play though, he saw the pocket closing in around him, rolled out, had nowhere to go. Rather than throw the ball and risk an interception, he hangs on to the football. Pretty smart play right there by the young quarterback. You see English dropping back, rolls out, gets a little help on the block right there. Steps up, cannot see anybody. Still has a little bit of time, but he senses the pocket closing around him, sees the players coming in. Does a very nice job getting back to the line of scrimmage. That's something you really, you can't teach. You gotta get some experience, and Pat English has shown that only as a junior. First time on the varsity level, doing a nice job today running this offense. Third and 11, English looking to pass for Papsadero. Tipped, originally tipped by number 30 for menacing Ryan Niger, and then tipped by Pap. Sidero, so fourth down for the Gladiators. They go three and out. Just a simple slant play that got them about 40 yards and a reception early in the first half. He throws it again, this time deflected this time. Pass may have been online. Can't quite tell from that angle, but pass was deflected nicely. Good job by Minnesink. Has gotten their hands on a couple of passes so far this game. Row to punt back at his own 35. Three men back for the Warriors. Walsh, Lee, and Fazingo. Punt is away, taken by Walsh at the 16-yard line. Walsh hit and dropped at the 30. So it's a 14-yard punt return for Ben Walsh. Minnesink goes on offense, down seven with 10.03 to go in this fourth quarter. Nicely executed tackle by number 82, Tory Lindland on that play. 6-2 junior. Walsh, tough guy to bring down, as you can see. As evidenced by the touchdown, they scored early in this second half. Little what a nice job taking Walsh down, making no doubt about it. First and 10 from the 30. First possession for Minnesink, they were able to score in the second half. Last two possessions, nowhere. Get some of the scenery, some of the trees that are overlooking Gustafson Field here in Goshen. High school football on Cable 6 on the game of the week. Pascarelli to pass. And it's in and out of the hands of Mike Graziano. That's a third pass Graziano has dropped in this game, two of which were legitimate drop passes. Hits him right in the numbers that time. It's one you gotta have again, Ed. I don't know if you saw number 80, Mike Cisha, all the way out, wide open right here on this side. Pascarelli just not looking this way. Wants Graziano to get his hands on the football, but as you can see right here, right in his hands, looking to run before he caught it. Had plenty of room, could get a nice pick up of yardage there. Coach Bell not very happy about the way his big tight end is hanging onto the football, or rather no isn't. Second and 10. No fire! 4-4 four, four at the, actually five. No, four, Goshen is in a 5-3 or 4-2 at the moment. Pasquarelli to pass, and that pass is incomplete. Mike Sisa thought that Frank Nawara got there too early, but referee says no, and it's third down and 10. Alex is standing by. Alex, what do you have? Okay, thanks, Ted. Uh, Minnesota Valley starting center Rob Wilcox will not be coming back into the game. He's on the bench right now shaking a little bit. The trainer believes he's suffering from dehydration because he didn't eat anything before game day. Either way, to be precautious, they're not going to bring him back into the game, and they'll expect him to be ready, though, for next week. Back up there to you. Thanks a lot, Alex. So Chris DeMott is back in the game, and he will spend the rest of the game at center. Pascarelli going deep for Shisa. Complete inside the 40 of the Gladiators. Big pickup, 42 yards. Well, we talked about him being wide open early uh, early on in the game, and a couple plays ago, he's wide open. 
why don't they just go to him? They tried last play, was deflected nicely, but they tell him to go long, and he makes the big pickup. And talk about dehydration, Ed, is that uh, Wilcox is out for dehydration. Eating is a problem, too, but you got to drink, and you got to drink even, even a day before the game. And today, it started out as a cool one, but the sun has come out, and in the pads, on a day like in early September, it gets real difficult to play under conditions like this. You got to be drinking water. Pump fake, and it's intercepted. Frank Nawara with the interception. Pascarelli slowly makes his way to the sideline. Pascarelli now really starting to make bad decisions. That play was triple covered. He could have just held on to the ball, looked for another receiver. He'd just been focusing on one receiver, it seems, this whole game as he steps back. Cisha's open, pump fake to him wide, goes over the middle, and he throws it right into the hands of Nuara. Fourth turnover of the game for the Warriors. They had four last week against Sargates. It didn't hurt them there. It is hurting them here. First down and 10 at the 23 for the Gladiators. It's a heartbreaker, especially after a big play like they had with Sisha making that reception. Up the middle, maybe three yard gain. That is Andrashak for the Gladiators. Call it third and seven. Not only Goshen defense staring him in the face now, but a menacing offense has clock to deal with, winding down to nine minutes left in the game. Nine minutes left in this fourth quarter. It's second and seven for the Gladiators on the 27-yard line. Papsadero to the right. Taking no Duarte chances to run it. Right up the middle. And the Minnesink front seven, front eight, doing a good job at stopping the Gladiator rushing attack. That's a loss of one for Andrew Shack. So third. Still call it seven because it was maybe half a yard loss. So still call it third and seven. 8.20 and counting. Goshen at this point just looking to run the clock, but they have to be able to run the football in order to do that. Nuara to the left, Papsadero to the right. English to pass. Smith had it tipped away. Ryan Niger on the play right there, making the tip. Wide open pass right to Smith. Smith ready to receive the ball, but just popping into your screen as we can get a good look at it here. Nice pass, watch the football. There's Niger just getting a piece of it, knocking it away from Smith. Good play by the defense. Minnesota got to keep pounding the football, keep them from moving ahead. It goes from deep in their own end, give Minnesota some good field position here. Andrew wrote a punt for the Gladiators. Important play for the Warriors. Flags on the play. May have been motion, and five yards would make it fourth and two instead of fourth and seven. That's what the play is going to be. We'll see what Goshen does now if they elect to go for it instead of punt it away. At this, in this point of the field, at 30, it's going to be marked at the 32. I would still think they're going to punt it. I would, I would punt at this point because with Minnesota's offense, you want to push them back as far as you can, and they're so quick. It's only a one possession game right now. 7 to 14 the score. 7.57 to go. You'd like to hold on to the football if you can, but two yards is too risky right now. Pazingo hit and dropped right at the 40 yard line. That's where Minnesota will go on offense with 7.47 left to go in this fourth quarter. Well, Minnesota Valley beat Saugerties in game one. They are playing Goshen in game two. Here's the rest of their schedule. They will be at Warwick for week three. They will be home to Rondout Valley and then Horace Greeley, a three-game homestand against Rondout, Horace Greeley, and Kingston. Then it's two games away, Saunders, and then a big game at Port Jervis. That very well may decide the Class A champion. And then they finish out the year October 31st, home to Walk Hill, and that Walk Hill game is a Cable 6 game of the week. Be aggressive. Very, very tough schedule this year for the Minnesota probably Warriors. I didn't think they'd expect to get this kind of effort out of Goshen, especially after what Port Jervis did to them last week, and after what they had done to Saugerties. 
But uh, they have a lot of work to do, a lot of green, 7.47 to go in this game. Walsh, oh. fumble! And this time, Minnesink able to recover. That was almost the fifth turnover of the game. Football's loose. Minnesink recovers again, and it is definitely, yes, it is hey, Minnesink Valley football. Again, William, football. excuse me, that's uh, number 70. Peter Morgato able to jump on it for the Warriors. Walsh gets it here. Just a simple handoff, running off tackle. He gets popped. It looked like he may have hooked it on one of his own players. I can't quite tell. He may have caught the ball in the hip of one of his own players and lost control of it. It was a two-yard pickup before the fumble, and then the ball popped out five yards. So a two-yard pickup for Lee, and then five yards on the fumble, second down and three. Had a heck of a nice hole that was opened up for him right there by the Minnesota offensive line. Morgano, Wilcox, and right. Mark Ray into the lineup as wide receiver. Now he's up line to the left, but it's Corey Lee up the middle, picking up the first down to the 47-yard line. Playing power football is what got them their first score to get them seven points. First down for Minnesota Valley over the 50-yard line now at the 45 of Goshen. 648 remaining here, down by seven, and the clock begins to tick. 640 left in the game. Hand off, off tackle, Walsh. Walsh picks up five yards, maybe six, to the 41. And Minnesig looks to be working on Scott Warsdale and Greg Nowicki on that near side. Take a look at the Goshen schedule, and Justin, you said that the Minnesig Valley schedule was tough. Goshen's first five games are very tough. Port Jervis and Minnesing Valley, both class A schools. Rundown Valley on the 20th, they were the class B champion. Marlboro is already 1-0 with a league win, and then another class A school in Warwick. So three class A schools and last year's class B champion in Goshen's first five games. Then it's Antiora, Ellenville, New Paltz, and Cornwall. Up the middle, that's Lee, close to another Minnesing Valley first down. And when all else fails, your Bulldog. Minnesink doing a job, just giving the ball to, to Corey Lee and to Ben Walsh, and they're going very, very hard. At number 74 of Goshen Defense, Scott Warsdale and Greg Nowicki, number 72, just blazing a trail right through there right now. They're really getting the job done. Goshen's going to have to make a change here. Scott Warsdale coming to the sideline, asking for some help from defensive coach of Goshen. As we get a look at us, where are we? Hey, here we are. <laughs> Life in the booth. The, it is a first down for Minnesota Valley, and Goshen calls a timeout with 5.48 left. So we'll take a break, 5.48 left, first down Minnesota, 14-7 Goshen, back after this. When you bring your car to Hudson Valley Auto Tire, your repairs are guaranteed. You realize that our continued success depends on you our customers. We're your Napa Auto Care Center, a recognized leader in the automotive field. As Corey Lee has started to pick up the yards, 14 carries, 76 yards in today's game. Has not scored a touchdown. He did have a touchdown last week against Sargates. He continues to produce though, and especially in this drive, this is the do or die drive right now for Minnesink. Yes, he has 197 yards rushing in two games, two varsity games, 197 yards. That's almost 100 yards a game. Not bad for the junior. Not bad at all. Goshen calling the timeout. Coach Chip Elliott, the defensive coach, trying to make an adjustment. They're just getting riddled on that left side. Minnesota is working hard, trying to get some extra yards. Power football. Go to the air. Pascarelli to pass, complete to Walsh. Walsh breaks one tackle. Might have been a fumble as Lee now has the football. Minnesink able to recover. That was Lee on the recovery. Second and very short. See if we can see it. Well, they go to the left side with the run. Now to go to the right side with a short pass. Walsh just coming out of the backfield, wide open. Nice job making the catch. Turns out, let's see, he does lose the football. Falls back on top of it. And he may have been called out of bounds. Two Goshen players coming in, and I don't see the ball. Looks like Lee had it, but I guess it might have been out of bounds the call before. Minnesink regains possession. Second down, a very short. Quick handoff to Lee. Second and one, that's actually Walsh up the middle, picks up the first down. Walsh from the 29 to maybe the 24, 23, make it the 20 yard line. Walsh coming in now, and that was Corey Lee. 
running off tackles. You can see number six right here, right off the guard. Now look at the push he's getting. Look at all the white jerseys right in front of him. They just squeezes through and keeps those legs pumping. Gets another couple of yards. First down, Minnesink. Here they come. Have a chance to tie. They are very much in this football game now. All the penalties and turnovers aside, here's their big chance. Lee went in motion. Pascarelli on a keeper, turns it up. Picks up only about three yards. Goshen read that play very, very well. The defense all over it. You can see as Pascarelli steps back, tries to give a just a dive play right there. I think that's to Walsh or Lee. It, that was Lee, actually. And up cuts Pascarelli. Turns a zero yards gain into about three or four. Mike Smith doing a good job, able to shed the block of number 88 from Minnesink. Jesse Mann, and make that tackle second and seven. Pascarelli to pass. Complete to Graziano. Hit and dropped by Papsadero, but a first down inside the 10 yard line for the Warriors. First and goal. This time when it counts, Graziano gets his hands on it and holds on to it. He sees Cisha just firing up his teammates. Let's go. Get us back into it. Pascarelli, first time they go right. Minnesink doing a nice job going side to side here. Just a quick rollout. Look at how he stays in. Good composure. Sets his feet. Makes a nice throw. Graziano lowers his head on Papsadero who takes him down in the legs. Minnesink is on the move. 3.37 and time has been called with 3.35 remaining. Official timeout. Well, after the game, Justin and I will pick the Cable 6 player of the game with plaque provided by Hudson Valley Awards in Goshen. First down and go with the five-yard line. Nowhere. Big number 34, Jolt Voss with a big tackle. So Voss on the blitz, untouched, comes through. Gives a nice little greeting to Corey Lee as soon as the ball's handoff. Almost took the handoff and ran the other way with it. Watch Voss, untouched right up the middle, beats the ball carrier right there. Make that Ben Walsh. Walsh says, welcome. Welcome to my house, says Zolt Voss. Loss of two, second and goal from the six. Fumble, and Goshen has it. Fifth turnover of the game for the Warriors, and Goshen has a chance to run out the clock. As we said, do or die, looks like Minnesink might end up dying in this play here. Fumble on the, I'm not sure if it's on the handoff, but we get a good look at it here. Nice angle and a snap. The fumble of the snap. You can see it right on the turf right there. Who's there to pick it up? Big Zolt Voss. No doubt about it. Falling right on top and a lot of reaching in there. Carl Rumsey trying to get it back for the Warriors, but no sale. Goshen with 2.49 remaining and a seven-point lead. Minnesink self-destructs right on the doorstep. 2.49 left. Goshen, if they could run out the clock, well, has the ability to run out the clock, has the chance. And this time it's Voss up the middle. So he got the fumble and they give the ball right back to him. They're gonna give it to Voss and to Steven Andrushak. The two big fullbacks that go rotate in and out. There you see Nawara coming back in now for Goshen. They're just gonna hold on to that football, 227, and it's real important now. They get a first down, or they probably need two right here to put Minisink away. Second and three now for Goshen. 217, 216 and counting. I formation. And English may have taken a little bit too much time. Delay of game. So that'll move the Gladiators back five yards. That's okay if they wear off the clock, but that pushes them back a little bit farther. It's now tougher to get that first down. And they're also very deep, one mistake, and they're in trouble. Well, next week we will be in Middletown. Friday night, this September 19th, a big class double-A matchup between the Mini Bears and Crusaders of Monroe Woodbury. That's live Friday, September 19th at 7.30, Cable 6 Game of the Week. Second and eight now for Goshen. That handoff went to Voss, and he is dropped immediately. 
And a timeout. Time. Minnesink does call timeout. 1.57 to go. It's going to be third down. We'll take a break during this timeout. Goshen with a seven point lead and looking to run things out. Of the Goshen Gladiators at about the five yard line talking to his team. Third and nine. There was a loss of two on that carry. They need a first down in order to keep the ball and make sure Minnesing doesn't get it back. They got a long way to go to do that though. And Minnesink, right now, it's all up to their defensive line. They can get the ball stopped here. They'll have good position on the punt and on the return, but the defensive line, it's all up to them right now. They got to stop them here. Third and nine. Still time for Minnesink to get back into this. Voss. Up the middle, picks up some yardage, but he's short of the first down. Minnesink calls timeout again. 151 left. Ball marked at the 10 yard line, so a pickup of four. It's still going to be fourth and five, and Goshen will be forced to punt. Good, good stop by Jacob Wright. He's the only person between Zolt Voss and a six point play. As the sun continues to beat down in the air, players rush into the water on both sides of the field. Take a look at some of the Goshen cheerleaders. Trying to figure out what their next cheer is going to be. And here they go. Probably something along the lines of, uh, let's have a great punt here, guys. Real important here for Minnesink. Real important here for Minnesink to <laughs> You get a look at the lurking gladiator here on the sideline. Really the important Roman for wrestler, he says he's eighth in the state. Justin, really important for Minnesink to hold on to the football at the moment because they have three fumbles, I believe, in this second half. Two of them they've lost. One of them they were able, actually four of four fumbles, two they lost, two they were able to recover themselves. Right now they're just shy of two minutes. They got plenty of time. They get a good run back here. Nice punt. Good punt. Taken by Walsh at the 44. Walsh gets some room. Walsh close to the 20-yard line. Taken out of bounds at the 21. 138 left. Minnesink with another chance. The clock has stopped. Minnesink gets the ball just on the 20, as you said, Ed. 138 remaining. Watch as Walsh gets a good choice to put him in there, boy, because he's quick and he goes. Good block right there to lead it off and he decides which direction he wants to go, get some room to the outside and it's good for him to get the ball because he's quick, he can turn on the Jets and outside he goes, gets out of bounds. Nice final tackle there, couldn't tell what number that was. Could have been Papsadero. 138 to go, Minnesink with one timeout, ball at the 21 yard line. Pascarelli to pass. Over the middle and falling down was Mike Graziano, incomplete. The fourth time in this game, they've gone to that same exact play. At least the pass landed incomplete and not an interception. The clock has stopped. Graziano wide open again, just simply fell down and that kills. And you see Pascarelli getting the call from Coach Bell on the sidelines, he'll give it now. But again, he has the green light to audible anytime he sees fit. As Coach Graham worried a little bit right now that seven point lead looks a lot more fragile than it did earlier. Pascarelli to pass nope. again. Looking over, out of the hands. I believe that's Herkenham. Nope, it's number 31, Zubikowski. Third down at the 21. 127 to go. Social defense reading the play nicely. Look at the time Pascarelli has. Hardly any at all. As he rolls out, looks to his left. Now he checks, picks up another receiver to his right as he's crossing over the middle. Zubikowski, nicely thrown pass, just out of the reach of Zubikowski. 127 left. Pascarelli brings the Warriors to the line. Shisa wide to the right. Zubikowski just off the tight end's hip. Big, big play. Pascarelli to pass, looking deep. Fade pattern, and it is incomplete. Noara knocks it away from Chisa and it'll bring up fourth down. 
Tisha had to slow down to catch that football. Pascarelli underthrew it. It allowed Nuwari to get inside in between and knock it away. You see Pascarelli set up, has good time. Little pump fake gets the defender up, but Nuwara does not bite. He stays right with Sisha, just slightly underthrown. Sisha had end zone all the way, but Nuwara comes in and makes the play to the game for Goshen. Medesic has to go for it here. Matt Pascarelli, only eight of 22 in this game, and in the second half, three of 12. Coach Chip Elliott in there now, the defensive coach for Goshen. Look for them to put the dime package in, force Pascarelli to make a mistake, get the coverage out on him. As we get a look at Pat English, a very, very impressive game for the young quarterback, the junior. Shown a lot of skills in today's game, and more importantly, showed some mental toughness as well, getting through this tough Minnesink defense. Water girl for Goshen. Coach Graham's daughter. Fourth and ten now, Justin. Very important for Minnesink's receivers not only to run their route, but run it past the first down marker. They don't need a seven yard reception right now. They need ten. Not sure how many timeouts Minnesink has left. I believe they have one, and that is confirmed. They have one. Pascarelli on fourth down. It's a blitz. Out of the pocket. Throwing deep. Graziano. Just out of his hands, Goshen will take over with 1.13 to play. Graziano gave it everything he had. He made the dive, but couldn't make the catch. Ryan Rich and Zoe Voss, the two big, big players on defense for the Goshen Gladiators. Here they come. That's Ryan Rich bearing down on Pascarelli. Had to let it go sooner. Not a very good pass right there because he was in such pressure. Graziano. In there, could not get his hands on it. And also, Zubikowski in on the play, ready to make a catch. The two of them coming together close. A little, little bit of a crowd right there. Now, unless Goshen makes a mistake, this game was all but done for the Warriors. Papsadaro back about 15 yards. He is the safety. English takes a knee. Flag on the play. Justin, I don't know if we can get that replay again. And I'm not sure of the angle. But it looked like Zubikowski was just standing there waiting for the ball. And Graziano, in his enthusiasm to make the catch, actually might have knocked the ball away from him. We'll get a look here. Stepping back again. Ryan Rich on him. You'll the see throw here just at the end of the you'll play. You'll see Graziano, but then watch Zubikowski just to the left, right there waiting for it. He might have been able to make the catch. I think you're right because he did have a step. I think that's Nuara right there following Zubikowski. And Graziano stepped in front. You can't blame Graziano because he was going for the football. He didn't know Zubikowski was there. But that another case of just making that slight mistake. And unfortunately for Minnesink, they will come out with a defeat. Goshen on their way to their first victory of the season. Graziano having a real rough game, making a couple of big catches. But also, you saw on a second down play early on in this series, Minnesink, he slips and falls, loses the football. They, they throw, an, inter they throw uh, an incompletion. A couple of times, Graziano, early in the first and second, in the first half, made a couple of drop passes, balls that should have been caught. Tough game for Matt. He's going to rebound next week. But uh, that has a lot to do with why Minnesink is not in this game right now. Takes another knee, does English. It's fourth down and 13 now. Under 30 seconds to go. And timeout called with 19 seconds to go. Let's take a quick break with 19 seconds left. 14-7 is our score. Yes. Score a direct hit. The official, Eli Kazanovich, talking with Bob Graham. Coach Graham wondering, probably... What's going on with 19 seconds left? Why the clock was stopped? I believe Minnison called their final timeout with 19 seconds left. And then when, one. when Goshen turns the ball over on the punt, clock will stop again. Minnison should get maybe one play. Graham calling out the 
instructions to his team with 19 yeah, seconds yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. Hey, to try and block him. What you want to do here, though, if you're Goshen, kick it to the center of the field, make them run off some more seconds of the clock as they try to get it out of bounds. They're going to try and get it right out of bounds in a few yards. Good punt. Very Seven, good punt. Six. And it's down with four seconds left, so Minnesink will have one play. One player who we may overlook in our play of the game, but no less had a big impact on this game. Number 44, Andrew Rowe. Had a great job in running the football, but just in the kicking game, he's been stupendous. Kicking high, long punts, not allowing Minnesink to get very much after the fact. Four seconds. It's a one-play situation. Hail Mary. Let's see if Pascarelli can air it out. And let's see if Goshen sends anybody on this play. Ball is marked at the 45, so it's going to be a prayer for the Warriors. They got five defensive backs right now in the game. You're going to have three down linemen as it looks, maybe four. They're going to bring four men on the line. Come on, Goshen! Papadero trips right for trips right for menacing Papadero on the shotgun. He's going to lay it out as far as he can throw it. He's got a man. And it is incomplete, and Goshen wins their first game of the season, 14-7 over Menacing Valley. Very, very impressive job by Goshen after coming off a humbling loss at the hands of Port Jervis last week. Come right out, take it to a very, very potent offensive. Menacing Valley football team looking to do some big things this year. Goshen takes game one of the year for them, one and one. We'll be back with more and the wrap up of this game after these messages. Roma, the name for quality in Italian food. Roma Pizza Restaurant uses only the finest ingredients and their own pizza dough fresh from their kitchen. When looking for it. Fourteen seven, Goshen with a win over the Minnesing Valley Warriors. Their first win of the season. Minnesing loses its first. Both teams now one and one in Section Nine football. We'll take another quick break. Back with the player of the game and the winning coach Bob Graham right after this. And welcome back to Goshen. 14-7, the Gladiators with a big win over the Minnesing Valley Warriors. We're joined now by our Cable 6 player of the game, Joe Papsidero. Joe had a big game. Four receptions, 88 yards. He had 48 yards in punt returns, an interception, three knockdowns, and the big touchdown reception. Congratulations on such a big game. Thank you. Did you expect to play such an important role in this game? I know you're on the field for most, in fact, every snap. Well, every is important in the game, so. So you don't feel yourself any more oh, no, important than no. anybody else? No. Everybody's the same now. You, as a team, wanted to come out and prove after last week. You told me in the week leading up that you wanted to prove that you were able to play with the Class A schools. You did a good job of that today. Was that important for you as a team? Oh, yes. That was very important because we're just going to keep going with this and build from here. What build in what way? Well, we're going up. You're now out of the non-league conference schedule. Now you'll start your conference schedule. What do you look for in the weeks coming up? Oh, we're going to have a tough games in the next couple weeks and we just have to keep turning it up in practice and hit, keep hitting. We'll do good. All right. Well, congratulations on a great game. Let's talk to now the coach. Coach, you said typical game for Joe Papsidero. Well, it sure is this year and last year too. Joe's been our best defensive back now for two years and certainly we needed him uh, on the offense this year. He did a great job today. He's, he's a tremendous athlete. He works hard. He never gives in one play he's always there on every play so yeah you call him the heart and soul of this team no, no question about it I mean he does everything and he's the leader and the kids look up to him because he leads by example you talked earlier in the week about how the defense had played pretty well against Fort Jervis and the offense had to come around they did a pretty good job of that in the second half yeah I thought our offense had spurts you know Pat had a good day throwing the ball we ran when we had to uh, I would have liked more than 14 points and I think we deserved more than 14 in the first half a few penalties kept us off the board but uh, we're getting there. Offense takes time. Defense, we're pretty good already. Yeah, defense is always going to be there if you work hard. Offense, it takes a little time, like you meant. Like Correct. You know, offense is coordination and timing and uh, execution, and defense is, you know, alignment, hitting, and running. So it's good to get that first win, though, huh? Oh boy, you got that right. 
All right, congratulations. Good luck next week. Thank you very much. All right, Justin and I will be back to wrap things up here on the Game of the Week right after this. Join the pageantry, patriotism, tradition. Yeah, and I to wrap things up, a 14-7 win for Goshen over Minnesota Valley. And Justin, a big play, 7-7, Joe Papsadero, 62-yard touchdown. That's huge, and they really showed his worth. As Coach said, and you said before, heart and soul of this team, he really showed you some athletic ability. But he did it on defense as well. That's why he got my mm -hmm. vote. I mean, he made a great job in stopping some of the uh, possible touchdowns from Minnesota, reaching up, just making some hits. Good athlete, well-deserving. Yeah, and they were able to get that first win of the season. It's always nice to get that first win. After that point, then you can move on. Yeah, especially after the loss to Port Jervis last week. They really didn't want to show that they're that kind of team. They get blown out like that that easily. They wanted to show people, you know, and show themselves that they can step up and play against a good team and show what they're capable of, and they showed that today for sure. Menacing Valley, again, turnovers the problem, five, and really they should have had six or seven. They had some fumbles that they were able to recover, mm -hmm. but again, last week it didn't hurt them against Socrates. This week it did against Port Jer that, against Goshen. That's right. When you're playing a, a caliber team like this Goshen team, especially what they showed defensively, you can't give them extra F extra opportunities on offense, and Menacing just shot themselves in the foot too many times, and I'm sure they're going to talk about that a lot this week going into practice. Next week we will be in Middletown. Monroe Woodbury taking on the Midi Bears. September 19th, live here on Cable 6. That game, a Division 2A matchup between the Crusaders and Midi Bears. But for now, for Justin Adele, Alex Cabrero, and myself, and the entire Cable 6 sports crew, 14-7, the final score, Goshen defeats Minnesink. Have a good day. Tracy Baxter, the Hudson Valley's veteran newscaster. The excitement of putting...